Hi, my name's Adam Dubrick. And I'm Lee Warren. We've come to the Shark Tank today asking for a $280,000 investment, and for that, we're prepared to give a 20% equity stake in our business. I'd like to introduce you all to... the Cricket Cooler. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. Summer for me meant down the beach playing beach cricket with family and friends. We'd use anything as a substitute for wickets. We used bins, body boards, deck chairs, whatever we could find on the day, really. It was a few years later and I was down the beach with Adam and we were playing beach cricket that day and I said to him afterwards, why don't we put a set of stumps on a cooler? And the idea of the cricket cooler was born. The cricket cooler itself has a set of stumps at the front which rotate forwards and backwards. So they act as the stumps when you're playing beach or park cricket, and then they act as the handle when you're wheeling to and from your destination. It has cup holders in the back for the wicket keeper and the batsman. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's genius. <laughs> Does it keep beer cold? It absolutely keeps beer cold. Did you bring any proof of that? <laughs> He's thirsty. We didn't bring any proof. <laughs> but you can take one of these home and you can put your own beer in it later. <laughs> so we spent a few years now working on development. We've secured patents and trademark protections in most cricketing nations around the world. And we're at the stage now where we've got a product where we can stand beside at a high quality and a most cost-effective way. <clears throat> So could you tell me the offer again? So it was 20% for... A $280,000 investment. Two hundred and eighty. Yeah. Mm. So how have your sales been? OK, so we, we launched in September on an online campaign. So we got our factory to produce 1,000 coolers. We learned in a couple of weeks that wasn't going to be enough, so we put the factory back into production for 5,000 coolers. We've now sold 4,000 coolers. At what price? We're uh, selling for $89.95. What do they cost you to make, mate? Our landed cost is around $40 plus GST. Okay, $40 plus GST. You own 100% between you? No, we have a, a site partner as well. Oh. How much is that? So we split 33% each. Oh, the silent partner is 33%. Right. So you're offering 20% of the whole company? Correct. So therefore, all three of you will be diluted back? Yes. Correct. What else um, have you done? Where have you come from? What's your backgrounds before you started this? Yeah, look, both sales. We um, originally met each other working for Cabri Sweeps. I still continue to do some sales consulting work. Um, and Lee yeah. is in sales as well. When are you going to work into this business full time? Is there a tipping point? At the moment, this is, it is fairly light touch in a lot of ways. Right? So we put a lot of time and work into this. We work 70, 80 hours a week when we take our day jobs and we take this. Day jobs about 150,000, so we can live on that. Our families come first. However, this comes second. You want us to put in 280,000 bucks for 20% of the company, and you're not going to work on it full time unless you can go from your current wage right now into a wage in this business on an equivalent level. Yeah, if you want to be a diet entrepreneur, that's actually something that says you're, you're not an entrepreneur. You, 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 you want safety and you want no risk. No, I, 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 in all due respect, I disagree. We have taken a significant amount of risk to get it to this point. If we're going to invest in a business that you've asked us to value at $1.4 million, you've got to buy into this, guys. Yeah. Right? And honestly, ripping out 150000 bucks a piece in the early stage, that just to me says, I want to transfer from a comfortable job to a comfortable job. It might be shocked to understand what at least me and I know some of the others on this panel actually lived on while they're building their businesses. And in equivalent terms, it's a damn sight less than 150000 bucks. It's really not about we can't be bothered. In a heartbeat, we would love to. It's about our current circumstance and it's managing that. Yeah, I, yeah. I know, but going... Because I, I must yeah. admit, I'm in his camp, yeah. right? Um, yeah. We had a point in um, my business in the early yeah. days where we needed more capital. We, and the only thing, like most Australians, is, was our family home. Yeah. We sold our family home. We moved into our office. I was sharing a bedroom with my kids. I never took a salary for three years, and my first year salary was $30,000. And the only reason I did that is because every cent needed to go into the business to grow it. It also needed every second of the waking hours that we had. So focus and execution it, it deliver results. 
The reality of you not working in the business and what it requires you to get in that business is a warning sign for me that I've been burnt with similar things in the past before and I promise not to do it again. Would it change your decision if one of us committed to that? Next, will the cricket boys be able to swing Steve back onto the pitch? We're going to make a bucket load of money for you and for us. Like it's a fantastic deal. And still to come... Looking for 2.5 million. An ambitious valuation... Really? ...sparks a shark attack. Honestly, what you're saying is ridiculous. Yeah. I couldn't trust you. OK, that's fine, and I'll just respond to that and say... You don't need to. Plus, the amazing product... Sorry, can I have a go? Yes. ..that has <laughs> multiple sharks circling for a deal. I, I want you to have the best for you. I'm with you, Adam. I'm with you, Adam. Adam and Lee are feeling the pressure. They're pitching a product called the Cricket Cooler, but one shark has already bowled them a wrong one. The reality of you not working in the business and what it requires you to get in that business is a warning sign for me. Would it change your decision if one of us committed to that? I said I'd never again invest in someone with that attitude. Sorry, guys, I'm out. Look, for us, this is not about having a product that we don't think we can make money out of. This is about getting access to some working capital so that we can produce enough coolers to fulfil our demand. I think for me, it's, there's something that I'm not going, ah, oh, I've got to have it. And, and also that, that real um, someone in it full time and then how that works with cash flow. And for that reason, I'm out. You, you mentioned patents. We've got patents approved in Australia, New Zealand. And then we've got trademarks for the UK, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. Have you got the patents for India? We do, we've got a patent pending in India. So we filed it in 2008 in India, um, still waiting. We're hoping that it comes through. We understand hope's not a strategy, but yeah. you know, it's a, it's a challenging market in its own right. So we are waiting for, for an approval. What worries me is I'm nervous about silent partners I don't know. And India, of course, is the biggest cricket market in the world and there's uncertainty there. So for all those reasons, I wish you luck, but I'm out. I'm concerned this could be a one-hit wonder. I'm looking to invest in businesses that have recurring revenue and long-term future success. There's not enough certainty, so for those reasons, I'm out. Then there was one. <laughs> then there was one. I'm looking for people with passion. And you tick that box. I'm looking for people who are persistent and there's no doubt you've done that with your R&D. <laughs> you have a product that will make people laugh, and that's what we need more than anything. I'm also in an interesting position that I know somebody who runs the largest promotional company in Australia, and they are always looking for the next thing to take to their clients. So I am going to make you an offer of some sort, I will give you, or I'll offer you, there's never a gift. <laughs> this is always an investment. $80,000 for 20% with a $200,000 loan for a licensing deal. So you get your $280,000 cash which you need, but the licensing deal is dependent on a volume sale. So it effectively will appear to you like a loan. So the 200 is, they, they use that for stock for the licensing deal? They need the money to get the stock, yep, and they okay. need the money to get additional manufacturing, yes. yep. but they need the money right now. So it's still but cash you're going to get. But I if I introduce them to just one person, I can make that money back, be a 20% investor, and we're all sweet. Which, which is and a, it might be a very short-term thing. Which is, a, which is a good deal. 
for you. Like, it's a fantastic deal. Yes. I think we can. We don't want to devalue our business. We genuinely feel as if we've, we've valued it accurately. We, we honestly do. You're not going to take it. We genuinely feel like we valued it accurately. Now, I, I think we'd be comfortable with that deal, but at a 10% equity in the business ongoing. So my offer is 20% for $80,000 with a $200,000 loan. You're most welcome to take a moment. Can we take a moment? Yeah, of course no, I appreciate you can. that. I think yeah. <sighs> it's, it's essentially an interest-free loan over two years. We're going to make a killing in the next two years, but 20% is a lot. I have no doubt you'll get your money back on this product. The question is what happens next. Yeah, yeah. And, and your... it might be a one-hit wonder. Yeah. I might introduce them to one or two people. They get some big sales. Yeah. You know, it's a fun product. I've played cricket on the beach. Yeah. I've used all the stuff. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a deliberation outside, as you are aware. And, Naomi, we really need the capital now. We're going to make a bucket load of money for you and for us, and we've got yourself a deal. Hey! <laughs> Good on you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, Adam. Thank you. Well done, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really yeah. Fantastic. Congratulations, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Well done, well man. Done. Awesome deal. No, it was intense. <laughs> we kept battling. We um, probably not necessarily the, the shark that we thought was going to show the interest that they did, but well, we're stoked, really happy to, to have the investment and really happy to have a, that partner on board as well. Financially, we need help. So what we need to do now is get the sharks on board and take the product global. Hi, sharks. My name is Scott Bucock, and I'm from Heggs Pegs. I'm here offering 10% of the company for $380,000. The idea of the Hegg started in 2012 when I was outside and I was hanging up the washing. I picked up a black silk dress of my wife's and I was looking at the dress, looking at the line, thinking to myself, how am I gonna hang this up without any line marks, peg marks or sun marks? And I looked up at the line and there was a peg there and I thought, if that peg had a hook on it, I could just hook it up by the straps and that would solve the problem. So that's where the Heg, it's a peg with hooks, was born. So using local South Australian industry, I had some prototypes made, trademarked the word Hegs, submitted a patent application and went to our very first meeting, which was a with a local supermarket chain called Drake Supermarkets in South Australia. And I walked out of there with a handshake and 55 supermarkets. We've just secured Woolworths, as well as Aldi in England, Ireland and Scotland. We've won two awards this year, one of which was the Gold Award in the International Good Design Awards. So I'm here today to hopefully secure a deal with you, the Sharks, to take the Heg Global. Can I have a look at a bag of Heggs, please, mate? Yeah, sure. Well done, by the way. You've got obviously off the ground and launched. Um, what are your sales today? We've sold 43,235 bags, give or take. But what price and what are you making for? Give us the economics, mate. We're going to be producing them for $1.71. For a bag of 18? For a bag of 18, correct. Retail? We're recommending retail just over $5 a bag. Right. Good business. So the idea was when we first started it, we wanted to do it in Australia. At the time, it couldn't be done, so we ended up making them in China. Then, about eight months ago, we found a company that can do them as competitive as China and cheaper. 
We are 100% Australian made now and sh shipping as well. Can you tell me a little bit more about who are you and what did you do before you did this? I'm a country guy. I'm born in Alice Springs. Oh, nice. Travelled the world for about 14 years and now, currently, I'm an agent for keynote speakers as a full-time role. So this is still part-time? Right, it's actually full-time. I just work two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that's like. Talk to me, though, about marketing. How are you going to let everyone know about this, though? Because that's a big task. That is a big part of why I'm here today, is the PR side. We know there's other markets. We're talking to a range of different companies, from the Bunnings to, the, uh, to Walmart. You're actually considering exporting clothes pegs to America, made in Australia. How gold is that? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> How good is that? I did eight years in South Australia. I had a business. I was in the army down there. I, I got out of the army in South Australia. I lived at Clarence Gardens, just down oh, the road yeah, from yeah, Edwardstown. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is yeah. a great essay story. So you've, you've really cracked it. This is this is nice. What's your vision for this business? Two visions. I guess the first vision is to have a range of hegs. Second vision of that is that one day, why would you need pegs when you can just use hegs? <laughs> why hag it when you can? Pe why peg it when you can hag it? Is what I say. <laughs> So just to reiterate, 10% for 380,000. So correct. you're valuing your business at 3.8 million? That is correct. Right now, the sales don't warrant the valuation. So tell me about next year. A million dollars is our forecast for this coming year, a turnover. What sort of profit do you think you'll have after costs on that million dollars? It sits at around the 17% mark to begin right. with because of the... So you're still going to make $170,000 profit next year? that is correct. The $380,000 you want to you fend angle out of us. What are you going to spend that on, mate? The main things are PR, as well as wages. And the big part of why we're here asking for the money is international. Once we start doing this, we need to secure the trademarks in those countries. So you have a lot of trademark overseas and you're trading overseas? Yeah, we do. We have a trademark, uh, but the trademark, the patent's more important to me currently. When we actually send these over, that we'll put the trademark in as well. Oof. Um, just when you were sort of saying trademarks, you haven't done those and the patents, and my, my head was just going ching, ching, ching with, with the cost. And the, the valuation is also 22 times next year projected profit. Yeah. For me, that's an extraordinary valuation. For those reasons, I'm out. OK. Can I just uh, go back to that and, uh, just, and thank you for bringing those up. We got an evaluation done, and they verbally told us what the valuation was. What were they smoking when they made that valuation? I'm sorry, but you don't have the sales to support that. So we can all ignore that valuation, can't we, at this point in time, because you're not going to get 3.8 mil if you get a deal here today, right? You're valuing it like a far more established business with several million in revenue, with far more structure than you've got. OK. I'm out. Thank you very much. Tell you anything more about the egg? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is your life's work, but I, I just can't. I can't get excited about this particular space. For that reason, I'm out. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comments. So Naomi and Steve left. I haven't heard from Naomi very much today. I reckon she should go first. Do you now? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> So this is what I see. A really great guy who's pretty straight up and I know I could work with you. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. I live in the online world, but I do understand brands and I understand creating brands and I understand innovation and I believe in great Australian innovation. So the offer that I'm going to put to you okay. is nothing like what you've asked for. Bucock has come up with a new spin on the clothes peg and he wants $380,000 in return for 10% of his business. Three sharks are out. Will Naomi buy into the heg peg dream? The offer that I'm going to put to you is nothing like what you've asked for. OK. I offer you 
$100,000 for 15% of your business and a $280,000 loan because you're going to need the cash. Thank you very much for the offer. Yes, yeah, I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. That's a great offer, Naomi's is Major. I mean, I, I have you at you know, being generous at, at sort of between 140 and 200 k in net profit, right? And if you look at that business, that, that's a business at a, at a five to six times valuation. But I, I love what you've done. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a deal on my bit of paper that makes a bit of sense to me. One of the things I, I, I like, like ex-South Australian boy, and so, you know, I'm coming from that really, you know, trying to support a fair income Australian entrepreneurial person and business. Thank you. All right. So I, I can look at the, I can look at the 380k. Let's do that for 35%. But I'm after, I'm after a royalty. And it'll be 5%. Up until the point that $380,000 is all repaid. Thanks very much, Steve, for the offer. It's... And I bring with it 30 years of marketing PR experience. And I bring I bring about 15 years of experience in internet and apps. That should be really helpful. Yeah, that's you. right. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, the key message for anybody in business is debt is cheaper than equity. But there's one significant difference between their offers. So as long as you've considered that. You come here for a mentoring session as well. I'm didn't now you... going to shut up. Didn't you jump out of this deal? I'm just trying to make sure you think clearly, that's all. Now, make your decision. The decision is a hard one. Do I need to no, I want to, yes, please. So I said... Yes. $100,000 for 15%. Yes and a $280,000 loan, so you get the cash that you need right now. Uh-huh. I've offered $380,000. Yes. And I still think it's a good deal, right? Yeah. For 35% equity, uh -huh. which will be there yes. until someone else injects more equity, that percentage won't change. Mm -hmm. I will get a 5% royalty up until the point that $380,000 is all repaid. What is the difference between their two offers, the biggest difference between their two offers? He gets his equity for free. I'm paying for it. So you're paying for it, the difference, yeah. I'm paying for yeah, 15% yeah, yeah, yeah. at 100,000, which is a real, kind of realistic valuation given the, your forward orders. He's saying 35. On your numbers, that should take me about two, two and three quarter years, if your numbers are correct, to get that paid back. Sure. Thanks very much for the offer, Steve. Um, thanks very much for the offer, Naomi. Uh, I guess I'm going to... I am actually going to take one of you and accept the offer. But Steve, just at 35%, it's just too far up there. I would rather partner with Naomi, build the business, build the brand, use your PR expertise I'll and your be a marketing. Great advocate. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're offering that money and then pay that back, that's a wonderful thing for us. So I would love to take your offer. Well done. Yeah. 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 Hey, well done. Thank you very much. You're the most expensive no, cakes I've ever bought. I know. Well done, Scott. <laughs> You got some packages. Thank you very much. Well Thank you for that. I really look forward to oh, walking with wait. you. Oh, look, lots of ideas up there. Good on you. Well done. Well done. Thank you very much. Great Appreciate it. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Well done. Thank you. Of all the ladies to get, it. she's in red and she looks good and she wants to back the hegs. I'm very excited. I never thought I'd be in the hegg business. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Naomi, it's self supporting. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well done, you. <laughs> First to enter the Shark Tank tonight, an innovator out to redesign the fashion industry. What I'm about to pitch is a product that fits the needs of a real woman. Hi, my name's Vanessa Babwin, and I'm the founder of Sonsi Woman. I'm here looking for $50,000 in exchange for 20% equity of my company. Now, if you're a sonsi size woman, like my beautiful models here, you would know how difficult it is to find plus-size hosiery that fits your curves. Until now, plus-size hosiery has been tight and restrictive. It has ugly panels, 
It digs in at the thighs and the waist and rolls down, but not anymore. Sonsi Woman uses ultra stretch technology, which means it stretches over even the curviest thighs and hips. And the ultra stretch fibres means that there's no more requirement for a big ugly panel. Now, I know probably you don't know much about plus size hosiery, so I've bought a competitor sample and a sample of Sonsi Woman so you can have a look yourself. So I'll hand them out to you. You're looking for $50,000 for 20% of your company? Yes. Correct? Okay. So Which ones black are one's obviously the competitors and the pink one is Sonsi. Does Sonsi stand for something, Vanessa? It means curvy, confident uh, what woman. What language, sorry? It's English, oh, okay. but we've spelt it differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should try it one day, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good language. I'll just, speak Queen, I'll just speak Queensland. It's not, it's not a, a, a word that's commonly used. Sonsi. If you look at the competitors, they make a standard size hosiery. That's this one here. Yes, and then they put a big panel in it and consider it plus size. Right. So that creates a whole lot of problems in the way of how's it going to stretch on the thigh if you're not a standard size woman. Um, looking at the product, I noticed I sort of gave it a bit of a give it a pull, yep. and it wasn't falling back into shape. Yep. Is that is that correct? The three D sort of fibres in it is meant to shape to your body to make it more comfortable. So of course, if you stretch it a little bit, it's going to stay there because it's going to have a little bit of some sort of memory. Yep. But when you take it off and you leave it and it relaxes, you'll put it back on and it won't be baggy at the knees or anything like that. Can I ask a direct question, you gorgeous ladies? Um, you're, you're a consumer of this product. How do you find the difference between what you've had in the past to what you've got now? It stays up. Yep. That's always good. Um, <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> They're so comfortable. Yep. So comfortable. Like this winter, they were the only tights I wore. Fantastic. Tell us the size of your business at the moment. Just give us a bit of the numbers around the sales and yep. what you've done so far. So basically, we've been online for a year now, which means we've really done one winter season because it's predominantly um, a winter product is obviously more popular in winter, um, and we've done thirty-five thousand in sales. So you've only you're only selling online at the moment. Only selling online. So dollars or units? Sorry. Thirty-five thousand dollars. Right. Vanessa, what does it cost you to produce a, a pair? It's ar around the six dollars. We have four different styles, so it can be from the five dollars to the high six dollars recommended retail is 22 to um, 29.95 so you're valuing your business at 250 yep you've made 35,000 in sales yep have you made a profit definitely my margin is about 74 to 76 percent right yeah did you outsource the design or did you design no I designed pretty much the whole type, obviously not So is the your background in textile design? Yeah, and product development. And product development. Yes. So you have a patent or... A no. It's a general elastane that right. stretches a lot further than a standard elastane. These same technologies can be put into clothing, to active wear, to dresses. There's so much potential for this product and I don't think there's anyone out there really doing a basics range for a plus size woman. Surely someone else is doing it. There must be a competitor out there. They're, they're definitely doing plus size hosiery, but they're not using these fibres. How big's the market? Um, I don't know in dollar figures how big the market is because it's a bit skew if. Plus size women will sometimes go into straight stores. Do you know how many plus size women are in the market in Australia? No, I don't. No. Okay. All I know is that the average woman is a size 16.
What do you think you're going to use the money for? What, uh... Well, the one thing I wanted to do is definitely hold some of that stock in the States and get some distribution there. In the United States? Yeah. Right. More than 50% of um, the hits on my website are from the US, but I have about 5% of sales from the US. They have to pay $20 in shipping, which is almost the price of a pair of tights. Vanessa, I think you're a huge winner. I love your presentation. Thank you. You've got great passion. I would love to see you focus on Australia and New Zealand. The US is a big place. It's, it's very tough to crack into in any field for any product. I just think America is a big black hole where you can pour lots of money. But at this point, I'm out. You've been open a year yep. online. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell me how the growth's going month by month? Yep. So definitely um, in the winter periods, there'll be a $4,000 spike of sales online. Um, and then it can go down to just over $1,000. But wouldn't the US part of your business counteract that? That's what I'm hoping to do. To capture that US market. I've had 17,000 people come to my website and more than 50% of those are from the US. So this is a global opportunity then? Definitely. So how much stock are you going to leave in the US? Probably half my stock. I love you. Thank I you. I think you've done an extraordinary job today and you've really sold it. You know, you know your business, you've got the background for it. Um, the, where I struggle with you and your business is America is full of dead carcasses of Australian businesses. People do just assume that America is this big thing. But I agree with John. Your focus needs to be here in this market because there's so many lessons to be learned in this market to then go from there. Yep. So for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. I think you have a wonderful business and a wonderful opportunity. The great things about tights is you have to replace them. They don't last forever. You know, they get holes and they get worn through. Getting a customer is expensive, but you have a wonderful opportunity of keeping customers by a subscription model. I'm really excited about it, but I'm not sure about the numbers. What are you thinking? I'm thinking... ..that you're a little undernourished when it comes to the amount of money you're asking for. Vanessa Babwin is hoping to snare an investment in her hosiery business. Two sharks are out. Naomi's still sizing up the opportunity. I'm really excited about it. But I'm not sure about the numbers. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that you're a little undernourished when it comes to the amount of money you're asking for. I'm a little concerned about 20%, is it, for $50,000? Yes. Because I'm thinking $50,000 to set up a distribution and fulfilment network mm -hmm. uh, in the US as well as doing marketing, it's not going to go very far. So happy to take 20% for $20,000. Yep. But give you another $80,000 as mm -hmm. a loan so you've got plenty of money to really grow the business. That's good, that's smart. That's a good idea. I think, Vanessa, you need the money. Yes. So what Naomi's that. saying is she thinks your valuation was ambitious. Yep. But she thinks you need more money than you've asked for. So that's a dilemma for a shark to be in. Mm -hmm. Because she wants to invest in you but thinks you haven't got enough money, but she thinks you're being ambitious. So I think it's a, a very smart offer. Twenty five thousand for twenty percent with a eighty thousand dollar loan. Okay. Steve? Oh, I'm thinking. 
you know, I know very little about this, uh, about, about fashion. I'm, I don't know, I wouldn't mind going halvesies. With that other deal. So if, if you want someone else in on half of the deal... I see a big upside and I'm not giving it away. So I'm out then, is that it? I'm, 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 no, it's right. I'm excluded, I should say. <laughs> Unless you want to make a better offer. All right, so I'm out. I'm unlike the others, I like your business. Um, I think you're onto something. I'm much more optimistic than these guys about the US market. I know it's very easy to get distribution and warehousing in the US. Yep. But my offer is um, 60,000 for 40%. Your offer values the business at 150,000. Yeah. And Naomi's offer values the business at 100,000 with some debt. Yeah. So Vanessa's got a choice to make. Um, I think I'll take Naomi's deal because I came in here from the start and I had my eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. No hard feelings. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank, Thank you, you ladies. Thank you very much, ladies. Great reinforcement. <laughs> Congratulations. She's definitely onto something. I, I smell money. I smell money, I tell you. Congratulations. Good job. Oh, no, oh, great deal. I'm excited. And, and I, guys, I want you to wear these. It, it'll change your life. <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, guys. Get on the program. Oh, dear. Next into the tank, an online fitness guru looking to whip the sharks into shape. Hi Sharks, my name's Sally Madison. I'm the owner and creator of the Extreme Shredder Body Shaping and Fat Loss Systems. I'm seeking a $50,000 investment today for a 20% stake in my business. A recent report projected that this year Aussies would be spending close to $2,500 per household on health and fitness related products. Now that's an annual turnover of $8.5 billion. Currently we have 4.6 million Aussies with gym membership, which is roughly about 20% of the population, which leaves the other 80% and that, my sharks, is where my product comes into play. I've created a subscription-based website that allows the user to simply log in and access workouts. These workouts are designed to shred fat and change the shape of your body. These workouts are choreographed to music, which makes them fun. They're also performed in the comfort of your own home using basic equipment, and they're new every 28 days, which keeps the product fresh and exciting. The user will also have access to my revolutionary fat loss techniques, including balancing your hormones. Sharks, this product, it's accessible, it's cost effective, it's less than $8 a week, it's time effective, my workouts are 20 minutes a day, it's easy to use, and it's results based. So, my mission is pretty simple. Inspire women to take up weight training and strength training and educate them as to how to do so. Teach women to balance their hormones and shred fat for life. Now, I'm gonna show you just how easy this product is to use. You ladies might be off the hook because you've got your heels on. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna do some squats. Yeah, what so are we doing? I'm, I'm actually going to time it. Time it, Because right. it's choreographed to music. Yeah. Yep. And this is gonna be your workout for the day. All right, we ready? Yeah. Hands on struggle. hips, He's chest gonna up. struggle. Can't You're looking happy there, Steve. Okay, yeah. on my count and down. Down, up, up, good, down, down. You want to squeeze your glutes at the top, make sure you're driving through the oh, heels. Yeah, I can feel that squeeze. Yep, yeah. through your heels, that's it. Good, Glenn. <laughs> Doing that. Further, Glenn, further. Oh, no, I split my pants. <laughs> now, this is one of my booty How does it building look? workouts. I love yeah? it. I have to take a photo for them. What's a booty? A good bum. 
Okay. Singles. <laughs> and then we're going to hold at the bottom. Ready? Hold. Three, two, and time. You're off the hook. Good hey. work. <laughs> okay, so Sally, fifty thousand dollars for twenty percent. Right, got it. So tell us a bit about your business model. Uh, so I launched the business as a one-time payment business model back in July two thousand and thirteen. Uh, today, it's turned over two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. Uh, I launched the subscription part of the website four months ago, and that's turned over twenty-five thousand. Just so I can understand growth, the twenty-five thousand dollars in the last four months. How is that broken down? I'm growing at about 30 uh, subscription customers a month. I also have supplements on, on my website, and that's for balancing hormones. So I've done nine and a half in subscriptions and 11,000 in supplements. My projected turnover for this year, with adding in the supplement costs, it's going to be about 380. So uh, you're looking at a net profit of 215,000. Now you're going to get your investment back definitely within the first 12 months. So Sally, where do your customers come from now? Yeah, mainly social media is my biggest sales funnel. Oh, sorry, Sally, Steve Baxter. Where, where are you from, Sally? What, what part of Australia? I'm originally from uh, a small uh, country town in Tathra. How big is your social media presence? Um, so one million on Facebook and 50,000 50, on Instagram. So yeah, people are, are receiving. I'm getting 360 visits to my site a day. So you've got a million people on Facebook following yep. you. Why aren't we getting a little bit more of a rush on your subscription model? Yeah, I think recently algorithms change on Facebook. You find that you're not getting the organic reach that you would, so you actually have to pay for advertising. Look, I think the space you're playing in absolutely is incredibly crowded. I can't judge whether you're going to be that fantastic person that pops out as a household name internationally. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Sally, um, I'm afraid I just don't get the differentiation. I wish you well, but for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> you know, it's, the numbers are good. You know, you've got some good growth. It's sort of starting. But the key thing with business is don't be better, be different. And I don't think you've proved to me today how, that you're different. I'm out. So Sally, what I'm really trying to understand is why you? You know, Michelle Bridges yeah. is on the TV, and there's other really high-profile people who have massive followings. Like, I feel your energy. But if, if you're not a customer, you don't know that. So, why you? Sally Madison is seeking $50,000 for 20% of her online training program, Extreme Shredder. Andrew, Janine and Glenn are out, but Sally still has two sharks in play. So Sally, what I'm really trying to understand is why you? Another area that I focus on is hormone balance for women in particular. So what does that mean? That means that when you understand how hormones govern your body, you can actually help shred fat in certain areas. I am going to make you an offer. You've asked for $50,000, mm -hmm. which values your business at $250,000. Correct. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to bring to your business, mm -hmm. not just in terms of marketing expertise, but also in terms of potential customers. So I'm going to offer you $50,000 mm -hmm. for 25% of your business, mm -hmm. which is not really much of an uplift, really. No. It's going to be subject to me doing your program and seeing the yes. difference. Excellent. So that's $50,000 for 25%, but you've got to lose 15 pounds. Oh, sorry, no. Yeah, if she doesn't, the deal's off. No, so, so you've just got to be convinced I, I it does what it says. I want to see the program. I want to make sure that it does absolutely on point for the demographic. I'm, you know, you're in great shape, and you just want to <laughs> tighten up. Well done. You want to tighten up, shape up. You're, you're thinking about that? I'm thinking about that, yeah. Okay. I'll offer you the 50,000 bucks. I'm after $1 per sub per week, 
until 100,000 bucks is repaid. There will be an interest rate if we don't hit some milestones. Mm -hmm. So we're going for 1,012 months. Yep. Interest rate of some description will kick in if you don't hit that because we've, we've got to keep you honest, mm. right? So otherwise, you can yep. take the 50,000 bucks, be lazy and do nothing. So every single subscriber that you have, mm -hmm. you give a dollar to him to repay the $50,000. Right. Until it gets to $100,000. $1,000, so OK. So he basically wants double his money. And then I'm out. Right. And then, then you're do you have out. any equity and left? I, I don't own a single cent of your business. You've got a very interesting dilemma because one is offering you money but keeping your business whole. The other is offering you money and expertise. What do you think you really need? I, I definitely need a combination of the two. So make your call. Steve, thank you so much. But Naomi, let's go shred. Yes. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> How gorgeous. Oh my gosh, now I have to do this program. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a book for you all as well. Naomi. <laughs> Thank you. Darling. Fantastic. Look forward to doing and the program. And you like the message in it. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you, Sally. Good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you. I thought Naomi would be interested just based on her experience. Why did you choose Naomi? I needed the expertise and obviously the investment so she can bring a lot more to my business. I think Steve's great, but yeah, Naomi, I'm confident that we're going to shred some bodies together. To Naomi, I have a gut feeling we may do business together. Sort off your fat bugger. <laughs> Next, an Aussie invention poised to take the sporting world by storm. People I've sold this to is skateboarders, snowboarders, wakeboarders, mountain bike riders. But could the deal of a lifetime end in a wipeout? Oh, I so wish you came and sent me before you signed that contract. Next, to face the Sharks, an inventive father and son hoping to skate away with a lucrative deal. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Now that's an entrance. Wow. Oh, oh. Impressive, impressive. Oh. Oh. Yeah, good job. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. Hi, Sharks. My name is Dimitri Fratano. I'm the inventor of the two-wheel board. Today, I'm offering you 20% of my Australian company for $100,000. And I also receive a royalty from America that I'm willing to let you invest in as well. Um, this is my son, Utah. He's going to tell you a bit more about the two-wheel board. Hi, Sharks. The two-wheel board is an all-terrain board. It goes down sand on the beach, BMX tracks, grass hills, and even skate parks. The two-wheel board is a lot like surfing. When riding big grass hills, it feels very similar to snowboarding. Anything is possible on tour board. It's up to you to see how much fun you can have, just like us. Like we say, when you own a tour board, every day it's snowing and there's always a wave at the front. Oh, oh fantastic. Glenn is a surfer, so you can Glenn, can you have I'll, a go? I'll, I'll, I can tell how good he can surf, boy, if he can do it or not. Oh, oh here it is. Camera's rolling. Well, hang on, I've got a suit on. I've got yeah, shoes got on. Shoes. Oh, got starting shoes. to give excuses. <laughs> so, and, and, and the best thing about it, too, is... <laughs> Perfect. That looks good. But when you go down a grass hill, you don't need to tic-tac. You just ride the board and, right, and steer well, the board. The board. Yeah, so look, he was going down a grass hill like this. Oh, look at you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to end up in your lap. Turn, turn. Let's hit the turn. Oh. Nearly. That's how you do it, too, like that. OK, it's not bad. All right, we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you really think that people who love uh, snowboarding, and love surfing, surfing yep. gives them another option. They don't have to find some snow yep. or find some waves. Yep. They can still get the moves without yep. actually having to find that terrain. Yeah. People I've sold this to so far is skateboarders, snowboarders, wakeboarders, mountain bike riders, scooter riders, um, motor bike riders. It's a, it's a new sport. Demetrius and Utah. Tell us how you came up with this idea and how it's well, gone I, so far. I thought of the idea about like three years ago. Yeah. And it took me a while to develop and stuff and get it ready. Um, over the last year, we started selling them. We've sold 350 boards in Australia so far. Right. We sell a board like that for $350, and they cost me $150 to make. 
So you make $120,000 in revenue. Yeah. Yeah. How long has it taken you to sell 350? Uh, about a year. Yeah, about a year. Has it, like most of them in the last three months, or? No, like the last two months, we, we've ran out of product. So you've got a supply problem. That's what we need $100,000 for, to buy more product. So how do you sell them now? Um, through the internet and just through Facebook. And social and, media. Yeah, and, and Instagram. We've got 4,800 followers on Instagram. Yeah. And like 2,000 followers on um, Facebook. So what are, how many skateboards are sold each year? In, in America, there's 30 million skateboards are sold every year. So Andrew, is it, what do you reckon? Is this, we're gonna see this go off in America? Yeah, uh, depending on how he manages it, uh, the, the supply yeah. side, and, uh, and to, it's all about marketing. So it's all about what happens from here. You mentioned an American royalty. I have a, a company in America that's actually making the two wheel and they painted it around the whole world. Right. And they're actually giving me a $10 royalty per board. Who's the they in America, by the way? Um, Grill, their clothing company. Well, good day, Demetri. I'm Steve. Hey, yeah. where, where are you guys from, mate? From Bundaberg, Queensland. Oh, beautiful, Bundaberg. Yeah. Hey, um, what's the arrangement with, with Grilled? I wasn't actually going to paint the board at first. I was just going to do it. And then um, this American company see me and they said, how about we paint the board for you? We'll put your name on there as, as the inventor. And then they painted it around the whole world. And they're actually giving me a $10 royalty per board. Who owns the paint? They, they, they actually own the paint. They own the paint, the worldwide yeah. paint. Yeah. Queenslander Demetrius Reitano wants a shark to invest $100,000 in return for 20% of his two-wheel board invention. The sharks were showing plenty of interest until Demetrius dropped a bombshell. Who owns the paint? They've, they've actually owned the paint. They yeah. own the paint, the worldwide yeah. paint. Yeah. And they own the distribution rights for the US and you get a $10 royalty. Yep. Yeah. And you own the distribution rights for everywhere else or? No, just Australia. I want to rewrite my contract later when I start working with other countries. R rewrite your contract? I'm just saying, like, write it as I actually receive boards, um, $10 a board what from. What does the contract currently say? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, I so wish you came and see me before you signed that contract. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I did, though. <laughs> the thing I don't like about the model is you're not in control of everything. Um, so that's tricky. The guys in America cannot do nothing without me. Why is that? Why can't they do, why can't they do anything because without Because they don't you? have the knowledge that they didn't invent it. So, so, so when the kids are looking at it, they're watching us ride the board and do all the stuff we can do. And then they see the American board and they ask us questions, is the American board the same as Australian? And what we say, it's similar, but it's not exactly the same, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we should just, we should all just buy a grill and then solve <laughs> the problem because you really backed us into a corner. I mean, it's a great product, you guys are great. The problem yep. you've made for me as an investor, you've made it too complicated. Okay. That's yep. what you've done. It's, it's sad because I like you, like the product, can see the potential. It's just too uncertain for me. So for those reasons, I'm out. Okay, cool. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. The US contract, something needs to happen with the US contract. You need to renegotiate that. You need a good, yep. hard commercial look at that. Grab someone who's a lawyer, n n not a mate from down the pub. Grab a bloody lawyer, right? And actually have a good, hard read of that commercial contract. I'll take like, your next idea. Because honestly, I think you've actually made this one too much of a, too much of a chore. I wish you all the success in Australia. I'm out here, mate. Cool, thank you. Thank you. The other thing is, have they got minimum quantities they have to sell or you get the no, rights they, back? No, I haven't got none. No, so got if they none. get bored with it and go, oh, no, then you're stuck. Without that clause in the contract, there's no stick that makes them actually have to go and work this really hard. Yeah. But you're great and you're very talented and you're very clever and... Thank you. you know, I'm sorry. I am yeah, actually yeah. really sorry, but yeah, I'm yeah. out. That's OK. Thank All right, cool. Thank you. Demetrius, you clearly came on so you could show Australia your wonderful invention. 
You've asked for $100,000 for 20% of your business. What do you want from a shark apart from the money? The marketing. So every time we show people, just people just profit. Like everyone in here, they all want to buy one. If I haven't got a backer, I'm not going to have enough boards to sell. Demetrius, my worry is that you don't have money to buy stock. And only if you have stock in Australia will you know what you can ever do with this product. So I'm thinking about doing something different to make sure you have stock rather than necessarily an equity play. So I think the best thing for me to do right now is to give you a loan so that at least you can get some product in your hands. Once we do that, then we can go and have a look at all the detail and all those contracts and we can get some very good lawyers to look at things to really help you negotiate that. So I'll lend you the $100,000 with the view to turning it to equity if we can get a few things sorted out. Awesome. <laughs> so you're accepting the half a million dollar valuation? I'm accepting the half a million dollar but valuation. You're doing it as a loan, a convertible note. A conver she's she's it, lending, it, lending you the money, pay, you pay interest on it based on sales and then subject to discussions, she'll convert that to equity and then you won't And then have I to will pay. be in pa partnership okay. with you as long as we get some milestones. Which means you don't have to repay the loan. If yeah, yeah, okay. I know. All right. Awesome. I am not. I don't really want to take all your money, but I'm saying that's why I really want your help. I, I, believe, I need sharks. I'm glad I need you don't sharks. want to take all my mo money, Demetrius. That's right. Huh. <laughs> I need... Why don't you wait and hear what the last yeah. shark has to say? <laughs> the last shark. Quite, quite simply, Demetrius, I, I think you've come up with a sensational idea. I don't think it's going to knock off surfboards and skateboards, but the reality, it will take some market share. It will create a whole new sport. I think what Naomi is putting in front of you is a good deal, personally, um, and I'm not going to try and get in the way of it, so I'm out. OK, thank you. Awesome. So, Naomi, you're the one. Oh, you have to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, Thank you. Congratulations, gorgeous. Awesome. You too. Oh, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Woohoo! Winner, winner! They are having so much fun, aren't they? I know. Hi Sharks, my name is Jen Lawrence and I'm the owner and founder of a website called newagestore.com. I'm here today to offer you the opportunity to invest $100,000 for 10% equity in my business. Hi Sharks, my name's John Bennett, I'm Jen's life partner and I'm the numbers guy. <laughs> I didn't grow up with much. One of the things I looked forward to was going to my great-grandmother's house on a Sunday for a roast lunch. After the lunch, my grandfather would give us a cup of tea, and I didn't particularly like the tea, but if I drank it, my grandfather would read my tea leaves. When I was 17, he gave me a set of tarot cards, and he said, these cards were given to me when I was not much older than you by an old gypsy lady. She handed me the cards and she said, keep these and one day you will give them to somebody who will share them with more people than you could imagine. And those cards went on to become the cornerstone of my website. In 1999, when I created my website, I started with a dream, a hobby and a passion to create the very best spiritual and guidance website on the planet. I now receive over 600,000 visits a month I do 2.2 million readings every month, and that equates to about 6 million page views every month. So from humble beginnings, I've turned my dreams into a reality. I have an almost completely passive income, a 90% profit on my business, and I have earned over $1 million. or which one of you can see into the future and realise the true potential of newagestore.com. So what I'd like to do is just give you an idea of what the website looks like. OK. So if I go into the tarot section, we've got about nine different options to choose from on the readings. And from here, I can either pick my cards or I can allow the universe to choose them. 
So you don't read, it's automatically generated? That's correct. It will connect you with your higher self and you will take from it what you want. So, over the last three years, can you give us the numbers? The last three years have been fairly constant. OK, so is it, is it 100000 bucks a year, 200000 bucks a year? About 140000 Per year for the last three per years? Per year for the past three years. After paying for all your expenses, where are we at? Uh, 108000 um, per is annum. Your, is, your, is your profit? Is our profit. Can you explain how you earn the revenue? So the way that it works, in its current format, the website is entirely free. All the readings are free. However, I generate my income in one of two ways. I have Google Ads on my website and I also have an affiliate system where it's a sign-up system that I get a kickback from that one as well. How much time per day are you on this site supporting it? About two minutes a month. Two minutes a month? Yeah. Why aren't you taking some of that 108000 bucks a year and actually turning it into a lot more? It, it's actually been run as quite a lazy business. It's two minutes a month. It's a fantastic way to demonstrate how light touch it is. And now we want you to come and drop 100 grand into it rather than take now 100 grand into it. I, I do have some issues with... I, I don't go for the whole spirit, spiritual thing. I think it's a load of hocus pocus. I'm out, thank you very much. So isn't the risk that if for some reason Google decides not to pay for Google Ads or changes their model... Yes. ..that your revenue stream would cease immediately? You're completely right, Janine. One of the reasons that we'd like the money is I'd also like to introduce a paid reading and they would be charged at $5 US so you would then do the reading yourself? No, it'd still be automated. Jen, I'm really disturbed. As a scientist, I'm just sitting here flabbergasted that in this modern age, people are going to this site, making life decisions that are really serious, and it's an, on an automated slot machine, and it really upsets me. How much do Australians spend on hope, which we call betting? <laughs> To say that dreams are possible or hopes or different aspirations, I just, I just think that that's actually a little naive. The reality is I'm not going to be your ideal business partner. I'm struggling with the ethics of it. OK. So I'm out. OK, talk to me. Yes, yes. There is a lot of people in this space. So tell us what else is going on in the space. The spiritual industry worldwide is worth billions of dollars. The model that we're looking at is not that dissimilar to her main competitor's model, which in 2011, with a suite of five other dot-coms, was sold to a Japanese publicly listed company for $17 million US. I'm involved in a bunch of online businesses and I've made a lot of money out of them. Mm -hmm. You've done well to kind of sustain it and build this community. But I think I've based my life on the fact that, you know, if it is to be, it's up to me. Yes. And I don't really, frankly, want to be involved in a business which in some ways gives people an out on backing themselves. I'm sorry, that's just a personal decision. Yep. So I'm out. I'm actually one of these people that do believe that there's people out there that has very, very strong intuition. Now, whether that means they can see the future or they can see ghosts, I, I don't know. But I do believe that people do. And so I take that really seriously and people take it very seriously. So as soon as it goes down the path of paying, I just don't feel comfortable about it. But I wish you all the very best and well done for what you've achieved to date, but I'm out. And then there was one. Naomi.
Jen Lawrence wants $100,000 for a 10% share in her online tarot reading business, New Age Store. Four sharks are out and Naomi is Jen's final hope. It's Naomi. I happen to have met the woman who founded Horoscope.com. Oh, that's cool. What an amazing entrepreneurial journey she's had. Yeah. Her exit was the greatest return on capital invested probably in Australian.com history. You have a $1 million valuation on your business. Yes. Which at your present earnings is actually 10 times the valuation, which is actually very high. I'd be far happier with a $100,000 investment for a 20% stake in your business. You came in looking for 100,000 for 10%. If you accept the offer, you're gonna pay twice as much equity. Can I speak to John about it? Yeah, sure. I'm very transparent, we're not gonna walk out. I'll just have the conversation right here in front of you. Does that mean the business is only worth 500? Yeah, yeah, she's valuing the business of 500. And Naomi gets 20%. Mm -hmm. So each month I pay her 20%. So we lose 20% of our current income. Okay. For the $100,000 investment. Right, okay, right. I think that sounds good. Am I supposed to barter? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you and Janine, and I would absolutely love to work with you on my business. Excellent. Good Congratulations. Yeah. What can I say? Thank you so much. Congratulations. Oh, love. Oh, well done. Thank you. And congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, really to meet you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you soon. I'd have to say, I don't think that valuation was that bad for an online business. Mm -hmm. However, I do accept that you will bring her a lot of value. So, good luck to you. Well, I have to ask, did you see that coming? I did do my tarot cards beforehand and I did get a pretty nice reading, so yeah, it was good. What then does the future look like for you now? The future looks very exciting. Next into the tank, a designing woman with a gem of an idea she hopes will dazzle the sharks. Hi Sharks, my name is Maria, creator and designer of the 10-Way Necklace. My company is Maria Nicola, and today I am asking for a $75,000 investment in return of a 20% share of my business. This is my daughter Kristen, and she will be modelling for us today. The 10-Way Necklace has 10 different styles in one. Taking you from work to play is a must for every holiday and makes a beautiful gift. Here are the 10 ways. We have one, Two, off centre. Three, medium length. Four, feature bracelet. Five, single strand. Six, classic strand. Seven, a short four stranded necklace. Eight, a double wrap bracelet. Nine, a triple strand necklace. And ten, by popping the feature bracelet in, it adds more length and turning it to the side creates a beautiful wow. vintage look. You did that quickly. Thank wow. you. <laughs> You've done that a few times before. Did a couple of times. <laughs> if you're going on a holiday, all the accessories you'll need are in this one little box. The instructions are on the inside lid and there's a 10-way app with all the images and videos you'll need to make styling easy and fun. There are also add-on pieces for upsell opportunities like the matching crystal earrings, the already popular crystal tassel, which can be worn by itself as a necklace, or added on to make even more styles. Kristen will show us the different length. Thank you, darling. And the brand new Swarovski crystal pendant, which adds even more wow factor. 
So, oh, wow. come on, sharks, let's get together and make the Tenway necklace shine on a whole nother level. Oh, well great. done. Fantastic. What a great Congratulations. Congratulations. Really well done. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah, that's that's well. lovely. Can you bring a couple of over course. for us to look at? I think Naomi wants a red one. I think you do. So is that a magnet? It's four Thank magnets. You, We've tested weaker and stronger, and this strength is by far the best. There's the red crystal. Thank you. And what are they made of? So we have a crystal assortment and a stone assortment as well. So is this your only business, or do you have multiple businesses? Well, this is the biggest part now of my current business. So, Maria, how long have you been going? The Tenway Necklace was launched only a year ago. One year. So what's the sales of your business? Mm. And then let's get down to the individual product. Sure. $127,000 for yep. the past 12 months. Mm -hmm. The Tenway necklace was $84,900 of that. Right, okay, 84, great. 000. Yes. So what does it cost to make and what do you sell it? We get each a Tenway necklace landed in Australia for $17 and packaged. Yep, and you sell it for? $81 retail. Right. How many pieces would you have sold for 84,000 bucks? General I've sold 1,400 necklaces. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, yeah. And you said $17 to make landed. Yes. Do you think that's a good deal? Is that, is that the best competitive for price you've got? For the quality that it is, I quality. do think it is. Yeah, I mean, it's a question. Yeah, I do think it is. It's a, it's a beautiful quality. So you've never seen if you could get this product made at a better price at a better quality? No, you've I haven't. You've never done that? No. Okay. Is this your unique design? You develop the Tenway? Yes. And have you? what have you got to protect your design? So as far as a patent along magnetic jewellery, there's magnetic jewellery. Magnets are used instead of other clasps. So it's almost impossible to... It's not, yeah. yeah. It's not unique enough exactly, to be yeah. patented. So the Tenway necklace itself, the name, is covered. So you've asked for investment of $75,000. Where are you going to spend it and what difference is it going to make in your business? Part of it would be for stock. Part of it would be for PR, uh, online marketing, Instagram affiliate marketing. We're talking global here, aren't we? Yes, because you have to remember, we've done no on online marketing at all. And I think that's going to just add a whole other level to this business. You've got no web presence at the moment? You're looking... I have a website. Okay. But that's the other thing we've been working on all this time. You've got something here. Yes. Because they're good margins. I mean, if you can actually make this for, what, 17 bucks yeah. and, and sell it for $81 yeah. yourself? $81 Aussie, obviously, retail. Yes. Yeah. How, how's that work for in a US sense? $59.95 is what I worked out. Would this on QVC, $59.95, it's a little expensive, but it's close. OK, so $49.95 would be better. Yeah. And that's why I'm frankly a bit disappointed that you haven't done more work on your suppliers. Right. I mean, having the passion to be in a business is great, but if you got this at the right price point in the US, uh, you might suddenly find yourself a very uh, successful business very quickly. You're a great salesperson, but you haven't convinced me that I'd get my money back. I know you'll be successful at the business. It's a question of how quickly you get there. Um, but at this stage, uh, I'm not an investor, so okay. I'm out. All right, thank you very much. Maria, your, your story is absolutely admirable. I mean, you've come up with the idea, you've actually executed in terms of getting the product into a box and, and mm. you've sold a fair few. My concern is um, it's, a, it's a product that probably can be copied. So it is about speed and getting the relationships and the network, and, and uh, I'm not in the jewellery business, so unfortunately, uh, I'm out. Thank you very much. OK, who's left? I'm still in. OK. What do you think? I like it, eh? I'd love to get my wife's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make it off. OK. I will give you $75,000 that you've asked for. OK but I actually want 40%. Right. Um, it's, it looks high risk, and normally I wouldn't do it, but you, you're really impressive. Oh, thank you. And you're all in. Yes, I am. You know, and all in is a great way to run a business. Thank and a you. great way to grow a business thank and you, a great Jen. way to get there. Thank you. So just bear in mind, 75,000 for double the equity you came in here for. Yes. So this is fascinating. OK. Because Janine and I came to exactly the same valuation. Uh. OK. But this is the difference between our offers. OK. So $75,000 for 40%. But you see, you don't have to spend that $75,000 on PR 
on website development, on SEO, because I bring that with me. Mm -hmm. Like that comes as the value in the deal. I can also see this in our red balloon range because we have our red balloon hampers and it's such an obvious fit mm. in terms of its ingenuity and innovation and what we love to see at red balloon. So it's exactly the same offer, but I bring more, much more to the party than She's Janine. She's saying her money's worth more than my money. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, before you two go yes, head exactly. to head, Steve, are you still in or out? No, I'm, just... um, everything the others have said, 100% true. You, you've, had, you've got a great story, you've made some great traction in a very short period of time. But I also saw your eyes light up there. Then I've got no chance at all. And on top of that, and please, and just, just as a piece of advice, she's also offered you to make you a customer of hers. Red Balloon sells your things. So don't get too carried away with that extra, with that, that, that second bit, okay? Because that's actually what Red Balloon does. So I'm just, as a bit of free advice, I'm out. I wish you all the best <laughs> and good Finally. luck. Finally. Saying that, it's quite hard to get into Red Balloon. <laughs> very exclusive. Uh, Look, Naomi has got that area. I, I haven't got that expertise in that area. What I can do for you, though, I'm very good at creating a platform to get your numbers right so this business can actually take off to the next level. The other thing is this offer isn't for this business, it's offered for your business. I understand. So, because I'm really investing in you. Yes, so absolutely. So that's, that's where I'm sitting at the moment. So, Marie, you've got two offers, 75,000 for 40% of your business. What are you going to do? Um... Maria Nicola is after $75,000 for 20% of her invention, the 10-way necklace. So, Maria, you've got two offers, $75,000 for 40% of your business. What are you going to do? Um, firstly, thank you all so much. It's been a hell of a ride. Ladies, without any disrespect, can we work together? No. Not going to happen? No, not for this size deal. Uh, yeah, I right. know what I'm going to bring to this business. Absolutely no, I can see it clearly. There are some milestones that we need to get to to yeah. make sure that it's all going to work. Mm. It does have to go through a process. OK. But, you know. OK, the last question I want to ask you, Naomi, is would you be happy with 30%? Do you know how much marketing and PR and SEO cost? I have to ask. <laughs> Good <laughs> on you for asking. Well but, done. look, I absolutely know the value I'm going to bring to this business, like, instantly. 35? Good on you. I'm glad you can negotiate. But the answer is 40% for 75. All right, my dear, you have a deal. Oh. Bad luck, Janine. Surely you're looking at me in the end. I have I have done I have done 35. I'm so right. Well done. You would be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank okay, you so thank much. Thank you so much. No worries, guys. Well done. Yeah. She's all in, though. Yeah, she will cool. make this work. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Next into the tank, a frustrated farmer who thinks he's got a blooming good idea. Hi, my name's Matt. I'm the inventor of the veggie pod. I'm looking for a $75,000 investment for 10% of our business and $150,000 loan to expand into the US. My business was born from failure. I was a miserable failure as a food gardener. I couldn't grow anything. After doing some research, I came up with a solution, the Veggie Pod. The Veggie Pod makes growing veggies simple for anyone. It takes all of the hassle out of a backyard veggie patch. It's self-watering, there's no weeding and no digging. The cover keeps the pests and animals at bay, meaning all you have to do is harvest your crops. The food garden industry in the US is worth $3.5 billion. That was a 40% increase over the last five years. The product is so comprehensive that it doesn't have any real competitors. 
we believe that we have the best vegetable garden kit in the world. It's time the world heard about the veggie pod. These are 25 days on day one. We planted them. That's what they look like in three and a half weeks. You're welcome to come up and have a look. I'll have a look. How are you, Matt? Andrew. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm a fellow useless gardener. Oh, you joined the <laughs> club. I like, know. So this is the product, this modular piece? Yes. It comes in three main sizes. There's a yep. small one, yep. a medium size there, which is one square metre. Yeah. And that's a two metre by one metre. And this keeps the bugs out and the water and the moisture in. That's right. I, I just had the snails eat my whole veggie patch overnight because there was a bit of moisture. Bang, gone. G'day, Matt. My name's Steve. How you doing? I'm good, thanks, Steve. Where, where are you from, mate? I'm from Sydney. Oh, there you go. Oh, Another Sydney <laughs> That's why he has to grow veggies. <sighs> so, mate, um, what are your sales like, bud? We've sold 4,200 units so far. We're in 144 retail outlets at the moment. What, what are your dollars in the last X period of time? Talk to me Last four months, we've done 200,000. You know, we're on target to hit our 650,000 revenue. And how much stock have you got and have you got debt? We have a $16,000 loan. We have three shipping containers on the ocean this week. And how much is that? $110,000. Coming from? Coming from China. Three and so how, how do you go pay 110000 bucks worth of product? Pay interest. You're not paying Chinese interest rates, are you? Yeah. Six, seven percent? Yep. Yeah, yeah, six, seven percent. Anyway, 4,200 units at what price? Uh, they vary. So the small veggie pods retails for 149. The medium size is 249, and the large is 349. That one, 349. Yes. That's the whole thing. Yep, that's everything. And while you're on the numbers, just run through the cost to make. Sixty dollars for the small, 86 for the medium, and 138 for the large. That's good margin. Yes, we like those margins. Where do they sell at this point in time, mate? 20% of our sales are online, direct. And the rest are independent garden centres and Mitre Tens and um, Bunnings. Have you talked to Home Depot in the US? Not yet. Would you like to? Look, I'd... Yes, I'd... yes, the, yes is the answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason I'm... I'm, I'm on the... I've come here. I need some guidance. I need some advice about the US market and how to tackle it. So you're after uh, 75 plus 150? Yep. What is that for? Basically, we need a warehouse in China, so that's 12 months' rent for that. It's to put a person on the ground in the US, which would be myself. Are you moving to the US, are you? <laughs> if all goes well, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm prepared to uproot the family and, and give it five years over there. Who is the family? Have you got little kids or...? I've got a five-year-old daughter and my wife, yep. Is that your daughter in the photo? Yes, that's her, yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> cute. Very cute. Yeah. And what happens to the Australian market if you do uproot your family and go to America? I've got two business partners, so one of them would probably step into the role, yeah. So tell us about the business structure. Yeah, sure. I own 55% of the company. My brother owns 25 and another ex-work colleague owns 20%. My brother, I'd probably call him the CEO more than me. He's the one that sort of calls the shots. Why isn't he here today? Matt Harris is looking for an investment in his veggie gardens known as veggie pods. The sharks like the product, but they're not mad about his company structure. My brother, I'd probably call him the CEO more than me. He's the one that calls the shots. Why isn't he here today? Oh, look, it's my idea. I'm the one that's got my head in the product. I love your product and I love your passion and I think there's a market for this, but I'm sitting here struggling with the structure. And frankly, if he's the CEO, I'd love him to be here so I could ask him a few questions, like why he hasn't given you better advice on the USA market. Right. 
Man, I'm not sure what to say, because uh, there's part of me that goes, I really like it, and, you know, I, I'll go on the website and buy it. I'm trying to work out as an investor how I can fit into this partnership. And one of the things that concerns me is that I haven't met them, and they're a really important part of your business. As you said, one's a CEO, he actually runs a business. I'm not going in this one. I'm out. All right, well, thanks, Janine. Matt, um, I think it's impressive. I, I like the fact you've put it all out there and you've got yourself a product you're proud of. But for me as an investor, I'm going, you've you got a fair, fair bit of work to do. And for me as an investment, um, I'm going to bow out on this one. Right. OK, thanks for consideration. Where are we going, Steve? Time tick tock. I'm trying to work out if I'm confusing my love of the product or my love of the business. I love it. I'm, I'm a frustrated gardener. I love veggie gardens. I've had veggie gardens since I was six years old, and I'm just nothing better. And I'm still trying to work out if I'm going to play. What, what are you doing, Andy? I'm, I'm bloody torn, is the answer. I'm just really struggling because. I agree. I think Matt's terrific. I, I love your passion and being the inventor. I'm going to definitely be interested in helping you access the US market, but I can't do it as an investor structured like this without taking probably 40% of your company just to cover my risk. So, like you, love the product. Market's great. Structure is all wrong for me. So, for those reasons, I'm out. Um, all right. I love the product. I'm going to buy one. I'm out. Thanks, mate. Wow. <laughs> Just can't get across the line. I know. Seriously, I love the product. I think I'm confusing my love of that product and my love of that business. Man, I'll give you an offer. I'm going to flip what you've said. Because I, I know how much working capital you're going to need. And with a commercial loan, it still has to come back at some point. So my offer is $150,000 for 20% with a $75,000 loan. She's flipped the offer. I hate to say it, mate, but that offer from Naomi and it really, really burns me. He's actually a pretty good <laughs> offer. <laughs> right. He also knows what I know about retail. Yeah. Oh, boy. Do you need to discuss it with someone? Yeah, can I get the boss out? The boss that's on the box there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. have a yeah, chat with her. Room. All right. Let's see what you said. I am. Oh, my I am. I am so Dad. frustrated. Hi, Dad. Hello, darling. Hello. I went pretty well. Yeah. I hope he says yes. I'll be real sad if he says no. I'll be surprised if he doesn't say yes. Given him the same valuation. I know, yes. But I just need a bit more. I think your valuation is right. Yeah. How does it feel? What's your gut instinct? Daddy. Dad, just letting you know those are real sharks. I can see I'd list that on the balloon for Father's Day. Easy peasy. Oh my god, that <laughs> is oh, oh, very cute. Hello. Whoa. Oh. So, what's your decision? We'd love to do a deal. <laughs> <laughs> You're famous, you're on the box. <laughs> Every time Daddy sells one, you should get 10%. <laughs> <laughs> Good Very luck exciting. to you, Matt. Right. Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations. Right. Watch out for those sharks. Watch out for them, <laughs> they're out there. Well done, Naomi. I have to say, I'm feeling very frustrated. Hi. Excited? Really excited. That was fantastic. It was a lot of fun in there. So what do you think of your hubby right now? I'm incredibly proud of him because he has worked so hard and just always um, 
been determined to make it happen. So, you know, it's very, very proud. <laughs> First up tonight, two Ukrainians and a Russian walk into the tank with what they believe is a mature business. Hi Sharks, my name's Dmitry and these are my business partners, Leon and Dennis. We are from Melbourne, we're seeking an investment of $200,000 for 5% of our company. Being able to communicate is essential to enjoying life. But many people, including elderly, and those with various health conditions, find it difficult to use mobile phones. Digital menus, touch screens, and small phones were all designed with young and able body in mind. Four years ago, my wife and I have faced this exact problem when her grandfather was struggling to use his mobile phone. He would occasionally get lost, and there was no way for us to get in touch with him. We were constantly worried for his safety. Coming up with a solution became our passion. And that's how idea of Kisaphone was born. Kisa stands for keep it simple always. And that's our motto. We design a product that is so simple to use that you can make a call with the press of a single button. Since launch, Kisaphone has been helping thousands of people stay connected in Australia and around the world. And now we'd like to present you with your own personalized Kisaphones. Wow. Okay, thank you. So, Dimitri, that was 5% uh, of your company for 200000 Yes, sir. OK. Thank you very much. So, let me show you how easy it is to use Kisaphone. So, at the back, there is a switch. Can you please oh, switch it to on position? Yeah. OK. Now, can you please press on the red button, press and hold for five seconds? Yeah. OK, so now you're going to call each other. Okay, Someone's you, calling you. you. Press on the green button to answer. Who did I call? Naomi, Steve's giving me the shits. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, I'm going to call you. Yes, how are you, Steve? Hello, how are you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, it works all right, so doesn't it? please press the red button to end the call. Yeah. So, as you can see, it's very easy to use. Also, on the back of the phone, uh, you can put any emergency or critical information about the person. So, you can put his name, his medical conditions, his emergency contacts. So, when people are ordering their phone, they provide us with all the photos, the names, uh, the phone numbers, all the information on the back of the phone, and we do it all for them. So when the customer gets the phone, it's ready to use out of the box. Each kiss of phone is made to order. So can you reprogram this at home? Very good question. If we can update it remotely for you, there's nothing you need to do. OK. Uh, your background, guys, because clearly you haven't got the Oki accent. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was born in Ukraine. Yep. And uh, I migrated to Australia about 12 years ago. Yeah. I was also born in Ukraine. I moved to Melbourne in 94. Yep. And I was born in Moscow, Russia, and migrated here in 2004. Hey, and you guys are getting on so well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you all come together? Have you got a background in telcos? I'm general business. We've got... I'm an accountant. And we've and got... And I'm a developer. What, what sort of developer, mate? Software. Software, okay. Tell me how many you've sold, what sort of traction you've got, and what are your sales numbers, guys? OK, so uh, what we, over the last 12 months, the revenue was $310,000. Our cost of goods sold were approximately uh, 130000 When people buy Kisa phone, uh, they have two options. They can either buy it with our, one of our plans, and then they pay $94 for the phone. And then we have plans starting from $15 a month to $45 a month. The second option, and uh, people can buy it with their own SIM cards. So pretty much they buy the phone outright. And then the cost of the phone is $189. Now, OK, competitors in the marketplace. So let me take you through the whole range of competitors. First, smartphones. They can be used with certain overlays, like different apps, to make it simpler. But there are various reasons why they still might not be suitable. Maybe they've got rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe they've got other medical conditions, why they can't swipe, why they can't use touch screen. Um, next would be uh, big button phones. There's a market for them. People are using them all the time. My father-in-law, yes. Perfect. But that would involve him still remembering how to navigate menus. We have one competitor that does something very similar. Right. They are UK-based. They've launched four years before we did, and they're following everything that we're doing now. We've designed the whole thing with feedback from Vision Australia. How big, 
what, di what dimensions, the weight of it, the functionality of it. Our phone, as you can see, you can actually feel the buttons a little bit. Yeah, they're slightly raised. If you hold our competitor's phone, you will not be able to feel where the button is on their phone. The obvious thing here is, is there's no keypad on it. Yes. How do I dial for a pizza? What people do is they put a census number. One, two, three, One, four. One, two, three, four. Tell me, how are you getting it out there in the marketplace? Fantastic question. That's really good. It's through our partnerships. So Alzheimer's Australia in Victoria, they put our leaflets as part of the pack, initial pack that they hand out. And there are a number of different partnerships that we have that do that. One thing to add, Kisaphone is the only phone in Australia approved under NDIS, which is National Disability Insurance Scheme. That means government will fund these devices. Okay. There's a lot of boxes being ticked here for me as an investor. You've got real customers, you've got real revenue, and you've got a real profit dropping at the bottom. So all those things are ticked. Um, where I'm struggling, 10 times multiple that you want for the valuation of this company, you know, we are way apart on value. So I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a, there's a place for it. Um, but the, the lack of barriers to entry means that it's all about how clever you guys are at marketing and gaining market share. There is clearly a need and a demand for this, but I can't do it at the valuation you want. If there's too much risk involved, plus if you're growing, you'll need more money. So. Dennis, Dimitri and Leon want $200,000 for a 5% stake in their simple phone for seniors. The Sharks like the product, but they're not seeing a $4 million business. There is clearly a need and a demand for this, but I can't do it at the valuation you want. There's too much risk involved, plus if you're growing, you'll need more money. So I'll make you an offer. Um, but I can't do it at the valuation you want. Uh, my offer will be 200,000 for 15% of your company. Thank you. Look, I, I agree with Andrew. Uh, the, the valuation for me, there's still massive risk in execution and getting it to the, to the, to the numbers that you need to do it. Um, I love that they've got you on the team, even though, you know, they, Thank you know you. the Russian thing, I'm sure they're fine with that. <laughs> um, they don't fold it again. No, that's so good. Because I think that you seem to me, and I could be completely wrong, you seem to be the ones always thinking ahead with the technology and how do we keep, keep ahead. So I think you've got all that. Um, my, my offer was, was different to Andrew's. Uh, in the sense that it was actually 200,000 for 20%. So, you know, really I suppose you're going, well, there's an extra 5% of equity, why would I give her 5% instead of him? Because you're and, better looking than me. And it's true, it is true. I'm <laughs> and I'm significantly younger than him too, so I'm, so I'm going to be your partner yeah. longer. <laughs> actually, Janine, he's more likely to be a customer. <laughs> Did you hear that? I know, it won't be long. <laughs> so, look, Looking at you three, I think I'd be a really good fit. I'd be another missing cog that I don't think you have. So anyway, that's something to think about. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a governor on the Cerebral Palsy Research Foundation. I also am friends with the CEO of Vision Australia. Um, I also know that we have an ageing population. So I have no doubt about the need for this. My offer is for 10% of the business, but it's for $100,000 with a $100,000 loan. So it's actually the same valuation as Janine, but it's a 10% rather than the 20%. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have... Well, you guys are great. Very pleasant, exceptionally honest. You know, you've identified competitors out there. You, you've, you, you haven't attempted to, to shield problems, which is, which is really nice. But there's a, there's a lot of things acting against this. I mean, you, your valuation's off the tree. Uh, you've got to understand that, surely. Hardware is hard. I've got exposure to this space, uh, which hasn't been pleasant exposure, to be quite honest. It, it's, it's, it's highlighted to me the issues out there. So with all that taken into account, though, um, 
I won't be proceeding. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you've got three offers. So one at 15% from yours truly, 20% from Janine, and 10% for 100,000 from Naomi with a $100,000 loan, which she'll give you terms to repay that. So different structures. I guess uh, time to make a decision, gentlemen. Can we discuss it? You can go out there, and I I'm looking forward to hearing Russians and Ukrainians sort these problems out. <laughs> so off you go. OK, off you go. Thank you. So, Janine, you said you want to be part of the team. Do you speak Russian? Totally fluent. Vodka. Who here has Ukrainian blood? Oh, oh Great grandfather from Ukraine. <laughs> you don't mess with me or them. The I've known you don't mess with yeah. you. So, you've got three offers on the table. How did your conversation go? It's hard for us to decide. We, we would like to work with all three of you because we can clearly see what value you can bring to, the, to us, to the business, and to the future of, of Kisafon. So... Um, Naomi, we would like Naomi. to accept oh, your offer. Well Wonderful. Well done. Wonderful. I really look forward to working with you. Thank you, Thank you for your good job. Well done. We'll have a great really time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you well, really. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Good Thank you. Bye -bye. Good luck to you. I think you'll be fine. Naomi yeah, will actually, help ramp that up. I think it's good. Be a good little business. business. But also, good I know business. that they can run their business. I'm just going to keep fueling them partnership leads. That's my job. So, how do you say congratulations in Russian? What's <laughs> How are you feeling? Amazing. Excited. Really oh, amazing. Really amazing. Yeah. We believe we can achieve lots of things with Naomi's expertise and we're really looking forward to bringing the Kisafon to Australia. I'm just interested. I've seen it so often on TV. I'm thinking, have they really got a, like an aquarium in there? I want a shark on board because they have the business acumen that I don't have. I barely know what a CEO is, but I think I need one. <laughs> Stop. Hi, sharks. <laughs> I'm Jenny. Um, my company is Strange Grains Gluten-Free Bakery in Perth in Western Australia. It's a wholesale artisan bakery. I'm looking for investment of $350,000 for 10% of my business. Okay. That's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Business came about because I'm a celiac, and when I first started playing with this, there wasn't much out there in palatable breads and a bit of research and a lot of experiment. I came up with a recipe that I thought was not too bad. I could eat it. And I started a market stall on the strength of it. And after about six weeks, I thought, hang on, I'm not going to be able to be in my kitchen for much longer with this, and started looking for a big bakery. It just took off. I had to get distributors because I could no longer do the deliveries myself. Once the distributors came on board, it just went mad and I still can't cope with Western Australia. So, Jenny, that's 350000 for 10% of your company. Yes. So you're valuing your company at $3.5 million. Yes. Can you point to your best-selling loaf of bread? This is the best-seller. To make a large loaf costs $1.60. What's its price point? Between 13 and 15 Hey? Thirteen and fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars, yeah. yeah. So it's a premium product, and you make it for dollar sixty. Dollar sixty. Can I can I look at a thirteen dollar loaf of bread? Some of the top restaurants in Perth use that across the board because it's a really nice loaf. Look how big that is. It's probably two loaves. That's thirteen bucks. Yeah. Buck sixty is worth of ingredients. Yeah. This is fabulous. Thank you. Would you like to sit down? I'd love to. Thank you. It's fantastic. I can't stop eating it. You've done an, a great job here, so I'm not surprised you. you've got all these awards. So what is the secret? 
thought, you know, I don't really want to tell you on air. <laughs> <laughs> so it literally is a secret. It is a secret recipe. OK. That is, a, that is amazing. Um, three and a half million buck valuation. Can you talk to your economics and of the business, please, to let us understand how you've, you've come to that? The turnover last financial year was just under a million. Wow! This financial year, it's going to be double that. Two million turnover. I think it might be even more. Do you have much debt or...? No debt at all. No, we paid for it all out of, out of turnover. So, so may I ask, well, how much you've invested in the business, please? I sold $80,000 worth of shares. Every now and again, you know, I get a bit short or something because I've never even had a credit card. And then I'll <laughs> use some of my own money and then, oh, no, don't clap me, I got a credit card this year, but I haven't You've used it yet. You've got a credit card this year for the first <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, but she hasn't used it yet, which is good. That's Very great. great. <laughs> now, look, I I'm going to let you know where I'm at. I think you, you, you have a, a great business that's doing exceptionally well. But I just can't get excited. It's health food. I can care less about it. I'm going to bow out and um, really wish you all the best, Jenny. It's been Thank fantastic. Thank you very much. But I am out. Yeah, Jenny, <clears throat> um, I love what you've done. This is going to develop into a beautiful brand around artisan bread concept. The thing that I'm getting nervous about is, from a marketing position, you're too niche, and I can't justify the valuation. I'm out. OK, thanks anyway. <laughs> Jenny, how old were you when you started the business? Um, 60 years. Are you married? Uh, I've got a few exes. <laughs> a few exes. I like that. Breaking hearts across, across the West. <laughs> they probably can't keep up with you. <laughs> so, Jenny, I love the fact that you've done this late in life, because I'm sort of, you know, fond of this sort of twilight years, and I'm a great believer that you keep on learning and growing irrespective of how old you are, and I think you're a fantastic example of that. We're all in awe of you, that's very obvious. But I'm not really the person to add a lot of value to your business in terms of scaling it. So I'm out. OK. Thanks anyway. So what would you like from us to help you with? Um, I guess I'm just looking for a partner to... I can lean on a little bit sometimes, you know. I hate making all the decisions myself. That's, I guess that's what I want, is the advice. I have no idea what's the right way. I mean, Jenny, you're wrong. I was going to say, you're absolutely you, you, wrong. 80,000 bucks, no debt, and you built this business. You've got more business acumen than you know. You about. actually have. Yeah. You know what business is? Business is common sense and making sure you make more income than there is expenses. That's as simple as it gets. And then how do you grow it? So I think you can do it without me. I'm out. OK, thanks anyway. <laughs> Thank you. So. Four sharks are out, just one shark left. Jen, there's people in every corner of Australia who can't eat gluten. I know. Would you like to be in the Coles and Woolies of the world? In other words, that it becomes our normal? Would you like that? I would love to have it all over Australia. Yeah. But I physically am not able to cope with it. And I, I mean, I figured I could do it myself anyway, but it might take 10 years, and hey, I'm in my 80s then. So I'd really love to see it up and running. Honestly, going to Woolworths and Coles? That's gonna be hard labour. I think the Coles and Woolies strategy is wrong. It goes into the big supermarket chains, it dilutes the brand and oh, damages the brand amazing. integrity. So, Jenny, maybe, maybe the right partner fit for you isn't sitting right here right now. Do you like swimming in the tank? It's fun, isn't it? <laughs>
So I am going to make you an offer. OK. But it's not what you've asked for. OK. And it's because you do need a business partner, and that is going to require such energy and resource. It does come with some conditions, because if I do this, I don't want to limit the opportunity by keeping it as an artisan product, meaning the recipe stays the same, but I would like to see it in every supermarket in Australia so that they have choice. So my offer is, is $350,000, which is what you've asked for, but for 25% of your business. Hmm. What I didn't want to buy was a lot more work. <laughs> that's, that's the only worry at the moment. Without making too many comments on your age, you're obviously, as you've identified, you're getting, you, you want to do less work, not more, and that's fair enough. So you need to be assured that Naomi is OK with that. So, Jenny, maybe, maybe the right partner fit for you isn't sitting right here right now. Jenny, I think they're confusing you. The only decision you have to make is do you want to go alone or do you want a partner? And you've got one offer left. Do you want to talk to somebody else outside I, for a yes, minute? Yes, I would quite like to go and... I've got a couple of yeah. my sister and nephew out there. I'd love to go and just run it past them. Absolutely, go for it. Hunter. Hi. Jenny has an offer. The offer's good in that it would get me everywhere in Australia, but it would take yeah. an awful lot of work. Hunter, you were saying you thought 20 shouldn't be more than 20%, but they're offering, asking for 25%. They're very smart, aren't they? They um, are. I'm just afraid I'm buying myself a whole lot more work. My job is actually to make her see a bigger opportunity, whatever that looks like. Jenny, you better introduce us. This is my sister, Wendy Page. Hi, Wendy. And my Hi. nephew, Will Woods. Hi, Will. Hi. Welcome to the tank. Thank you for having us all. It's a great honour. So, you've been out there considering Naomi's offer. You wanted $350,000 for 10% of your business, valuing it at $3.5 million. Naomi's offered you $350,000 for 25% of your business, valuing it at $1.4 million. What have you come up with? If we went in together, would you consider 20%? When it comes to the percentage, I looked really carefully at why 25% and the value that I'd bring to the business. And I'm not prepared to devalue my time or my energy. Alone. See you, Great. Jenny. Right. Well done. Thank you. Well done. You're on your way. Wow. Congratulations. Oh no. Wow. You got a deal. I did. Isn't that lovely? I haven't had time to absorb it yet. Probably middle of the night I'll wake up going, hey! <laughs> but right now it's just, oh yeah, deal. <laughs> You're like the grandmother that everybody wants. I wish I was 20 years younger. It would have been so much easier. <laughs> I think you've still got that fire in your belly, though. You've got that magic about you that will make this go far. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. First into the tank is a cook who knows what it's like to face the heat in the kitchen. I've put everything on the line for this business. I've quit my corporate sales job. I've moved states to take advantage of an opportunity in South Australia. And I'd love a shark to get in with me at ground level, invest in me, my story, and who I am, and what my brand is. Hi, sharks. My name's Heather. I'm 34, and I'm very proud to be a South Australian small producer of Heyday Butter. Today, I'm seeking a $50,000 investment for the future expansion of Heyday. In return, 25% equity for the company. After seven years in corporate sales and marketing, I applied for and won a place on MasterChef 2016. Oh, 
You look familiar. Well, congratulations. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Growing up, food was always a big part of my life. I quit my corporate sales job to go on MasterChef. I've been pushed, I've been challenged, and I'm so happy to have been a part of this life-changing experience. Now, back in my kitchen at home, I've created an artisan range of gourmet butters, and the company name and brand is Heyday. I'd like to get this onto the shelves, but I need your help, Sharks. Like most people who work full time, I get home from work, I open the fridge door and I see some salmon, some baby potatoes, some broccolini, and I think, what am I going to make? What can I do to juz it up? Well, I've got some heyday miso butter in the fridge and it lasts around three months. Now I can melt some of that through the baby potatoes, I can nappe it over the salmon for a beautiful umami flavour boost. What I have achieved when I've created this range of butters is that same MasterChef gourmet touch without the time and effort. It's perfect for home cooks and I've taken this butter to market. I've got great feedback and repeat customers. I've invested six months of my time building my brand. I've got food lands ready to stock, I've got distributor interest and a sales program ready. So Sharks, could Heyday be your bread and butter? Oh, well done. Well done, Heather. Well done. Thank you. That's great. So, 25% for 50,000. So, you're valuing at around 200k. Great. And are you going to get us to taste some of this? I would love for you to try some of my butter. Okay. Bring it on. I'm cooking um, some mushrooms for you. So, what butter are you using there, Heather? So, I've got a rosemary and garlic butter. Beautiful which with is, mushrooms. It's beautiful with mushrooms. It's perfect for dinner parties and people that are looking for that luxe, delicious, on-trend flavours. So, for example, I've got a brandy butter for Christmas, Wonderful. a chocolate butter for Valentine's Day. The cinnamon and currant butter is like instant fruit toast. The kids love it. Heather, I admit it, I'm a bit of a fan of MasterChef. But I want some goss. With the surprise judges, who did you go, oh, my God, he's here, and who did you go, oh, my God, it's him? Nigella. Oh, really? <laughs> I think like she's, the, she's the epitome of a home cook. Oh, Nigella. Yeah. Nigella's fantastic. Oh, Steve is secretly <laughs> in love down there. Just leave him alone. She was just um, a lovely, lovely woman. Thinking mean chef, Nigella. Now, I don't want to overload oh, you, yeah, yeah. but... Um, oh, I'll overload. So, closest to you is the coriander and horseradish. Holy shit. That's pretty good. Oh, man. That's good. Amazing. So, you got into Foodland. Congratulations. Thank you. How many supermarkets are you in? Are you going to be I'm in? I'm going to be in um, six Foodlands. Then I've got two IGAs ready right now. Mm -hmm. um, then I've got Drake's Foodland. So, that's right. 30 in... Uh, sorry, 30 in South Australia, 20 in Queensland. So, what if um, tomorrow uh, Woolworths and Coles says, I want you in 500 stores <laughs> right tomorrow? How uh, would you cope with that? I wouldn't. I'm, I'm okay. sticking with um, South Australia to start with. Why not? Because what we need to do is scale is really critical. Yes. But do you want it? I suppose that's the other thing. Yeah, question. I do want do it. Want it just right. seems so huge right now as a small artisan producer. Can you tell me what are you scared of? Um, I'm scared of getting too big too quick. At the moment, I can make 800 portions by myself a week. So you say 800 portions. What's a portion worth to you? I make it for $3.05. Um, it, it can go up to $3.90, depending on whether... And what do you sell it for, mate? Oh, sorry, um, $8.50. A re recommended retail price. So and what do you wholesale it for, please? The flavoured is $9.50. Um, wholesale, $6.90. So you're probably making around about, what, let's say $3.50 a tub on average? Yeah. OK. So you can do 2700 bucks a week on 800 portions? Yeah. That, that is a business where you'll end up making hundreds of dollars. You know that, don't you? You fear anything beyond 800, <laughs> yet you've come here today looking for an investment, and I promise you, no one here is interested in 800. No. So this fear, is that going to stop you in growing your business? I don't think so, no. no. I wouldn't be here if it was. You're not going to buy us with 800 units. You're not going to buy us with 3,800 units. You're not going to buy our interest for that. Please. Give me a description for how big you want this business to be in, let's say, two years, three years' time. In three years' time, I want to be making 3,800 portions a month. No, 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 but your capacity right now is 3,200 portions a month. Eight. 800 a week times by four... Yep, that's... It's 3,200 3, a month. 
But now you're sort of saying, I want to grow that in three years by 600 units. Yeah. I call that gutless. Oh man, that's good. Amazing. Ex-MasterChef contestant Heather has impressed the sharks with her delicious handmade butter. But taking the business from small to large is a concept she's struggling with. Please, give me a description for how big you want this business to be in, let's say, two years, three years' time. In three years' time, I want to be making 3,800 portions a month. No, 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 but your capacity right now is 3,200 portions a month. Eight. And now you're sort of saying, I want to grow that in three years by 600 units. Yeah. I call that gutless. And you don't come across as a gutless person. So we're not talking about impossible. What could be probable? With a 100-litre butter churner, I could be doing um, three to 600 portions a day. Great. Now 18,000 18, portions a month. Like it. Like and it. And so what if you had a churner in every state of Australia? <laughs> um, wow, I'd be pretty happy with that. <laughs> yeah. You've been a master chef. You clearly have a passion for food. Do you have a bunch of recipes in your head? Yes, I do. Could you be the brand rather than the butter? Yes, I think that that's definitely part of the brand is my supplying of recipes to my consumers. I think Heather Day is the brand, not the butter. And I'm wondering whether maybe the butter should just be one part of your business model. Right. And the business model shouldn't be you, the personality, the recipes in your head, and you sell product as a byproduct of all of that. Right. You believe you're good enough to be a big brand in your yes. own right? So you have enough creative recipes in your head and yep. passion. So I, I agree with you. And I think it's a question of really monetizing that business model, of which butter can be part. But that's got much more scale to it. Right. So I'm struggling a little bit because as investors, we're trying to work out whether you have the vision as well as the action to take this to somewhere exciting for an investor. So, you know, the reality is I'm just not sure. So I'm out. OK, thank you, Glenn. The product's great, so there's a big tick. Where I, where I get stuck is it's um, just too early. I'm out. Thanks, Janine. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted by you, and I think you're the brand. The butter's fine, but I think it's just going to be one chapter in your story. Frankly, it doesn't matter how much of that butter you'll sell, it's not a business in its own right, it's a product. Um, I wish you well. I'm going to spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone got one in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I'm out. Thank you, Andrew. What I see is you're a fabulous artisan. Like, you absolutely know your craft. And what I think you've come to Shark Tank for is so that we can maintain who you are, your craft, your beauty, but you need someone to scale this business for you. Mm -hmm. Because right now, because you can't see how that's going to happen beyond 800 tucks, you're selling yourself down. Mm -hmm. If you were the designer, the head designer, the head chef, and you had an infrastructure sitting underneath you, what could be possible? I don't know, being in one in 10 households in Australia in the next three to five years. So I'm going to make you an offer. It's going to be a lot of work. Yep, I'm ready. You're almost pre-revenue, but you've got lots of great intellectual property. So for that reason, I'm offering you $50,000 for 33% of your business. Okay. That's not a bad deal. Except it come from Naomi, so there's an issue there. <laughs> um, if you are the face of this brand, you can't be left without the equity. Um, you're going to need more cash in the future, because if you are talking about building a brand, it needs more than 50k. Holy do it needs a lot of money. So there's going to be some cash pulled back into this business. I'll give you what you've asked for, um, 50k for 25%. Um, but I'll be looking for a repayment of half of that as a royalty mm -hmm. at 50 cents a portion. So 
So how so can you say? When, how can you say you need the cash and then whip it straight out before she's even got going? It's crazy. Well, she's stuff. left with the equity. Steve, when would crazy you need stuff. You know the that. equity. You're you're giving her money, then taking it back. Why would you can do that to an industry speak? that needs to make an offer? Why would make you do an that? offer. Make an offer. So if, if you're after some cat food, you ask Glenn. I'm giving offer. you some business advice, Heather. That's a crazy offer. You know you need cash to scale. He said, I'll put the money and then I'll take it back. <laughs> it's an interesting offer. South Australian businesses, beautiful butter, great product. You've got an offer from Naomi of $50,000 for 33%. And you've got an offer for Steve for $50,000 for 25%. So 25000 will be repaid at a 50 cents per item sold. I didn't expect to get an offer from Steve of, of all the sharks. You could be everything that, that, that the, the rest of the sharks have spoken about. That, that's many years off. You're going to leverage one product to get there. Um, people are going to know you for something before you get into other things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hence why I think leaving you with more uh, equity makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. The royalty, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take a bit of cash away, but you know, I've given you a, a better equity position. What was your equity? Uh, it was 25%, it's what, it's what you asked for. See, Heather, I've built consumer brands, he hasn't. Pick me. It's an easy choice. I'd love to take your deal, Naomi. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! What that about? Thank you. That's so a good choice. Much. We are going to have so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's so cool. Congratulations! That's it's so cool. I'm so happy. Bye, Heather. Thanks, Heather. See you. Take Bye. care. Well done. Oh, I'm so excited. She's a delight. Make her a brand. Absolutely. This is good. This is really good. Nice butter. It's pretty good. I think I've just filled my stomach up. I oh, know, go and eat all my profits. There you go. Yeah. They not only loved the butter, but they loved you. You as a brand. Such that must a... make you feel so, so special. It does. It's a real confidence boost, and it really um, makes me excited about moving forward, especially with Naomi, who's, um, you know, I've been got such a girl crush on her. Um, to have her as a mentor has, is going to be unbelievable. First into the tank, a couple of young entrepreneurs who never forget a special occasion. We're trying to disrupt a pretty traditional industry. We're going to do that with technology, great product, with something that's great for artists. Hi, my name's Patrick. And I'm Tom. We're from Melbourne and our company is called Cardly. We're seeking $250,000 for a 7% stake in our business. Nothing beats the feeling of receiving a heartfelt handwritten card. But finding quality cards and getting them into the post can be a real chore. With Cardly, it's simple. You write, we post. The platform we've built uses proprietary technology to take what you type and make it look like real human handwriting. We then print the card and get it in the mail the same day from a location close to the recipient. This makes Cardly perfect for sending cards across the country or across the world. We've looked at the greeting card industry closely and tried to improve upon it in every way. And we've built an amazing curated artist community consisting of 50 brilliant independent artists from all around the world. And we pay them 20% instantly. We produce a super high quality card for just $6.45, including the stamp. It's cost us $55,000 to get to this point that we launched fully in late November 2016. So far, we've done $30,000 in sales with a little over 50% coming from repeat customers. Our plan is to grow Cardly to 50,000 active customers by the end of 2017 and 200,000 by the end of 2018. So Sharks, would you like to see how Cardly works? My word. But first, here's one from us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking very cute. Yay. Fantastic. Good day. Okay, good day, thank good you. Good day, mate. Thank you. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, hey, oh boys. look at this. Oh, you've done That's your research? Cute. <laughs> you that is go. cute. That's so cute. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Yeah. It was Patrick and Tom. 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 Look at your card. 
Sorry? Yeah, OK. All right. I'm... And you're looking for 250000 for 7%, so you're valuing your company at around $3.57 million. Yeah, 3.6. Just, just a nice round number. Yeah, sure. OK. So we wanted to show you how the platform works. Who wants to have a go first? I'll have a go. Yeah? I'll have a go. All the magic happens online. So you can do it from anywhere. You could be in front of your computer or you could be on a mobile device. Um, to type, you can just type anywhere in those dotted boxes. The key thing, though, is choosing your handwriting style. So it's, so it's more than just a handwriting font. Um, it's the subject of our first patent. Hey, now you're talking. Yeah, so we take a uh, base, good quality handwriting font and we apply a process that we call humanisation. And the, the gist of that is that we want to apply the kind of inconsistencies that a human makes when handwriting. So things like as you write the lines skew, they're not totally straight. The characters are not perfectly aligned, they're, they're rotated. If they were all uniform, you would, you would notice it looked like a computer did it. And we now support gift cards as well. That's a good idea, because I was thinking I wouldn't use that unless I had a gift card I could put in it. Tell us about the business model, because that's a huge valuation. It is a, it is a big Three, valuation. Let me just say it slowly, $3.57 <laughs> million. Yep. Hello, and you've got sales of? 30000 $30,000. 30, 30, so just bring us to life, sure. this business model. Sure, absolutely. So I, I suppose the big thing about it is its scalability. We've identified the potential of another 20 countries where we could also expand into. Yeah. In terms of why we've come up with that valuation, the bulk of the sales have obviously happened in a beta phase, so we haven't actively marketed the product in any way, shape or form yet. Tom, Tom, do you ever get fed up with him doing all the talking? <laughs> Happy for him to take the business and the numbers. I'm, I'm on the tech side. So all the tech development is Tom. Yeah. There's the advantage of having an in-house tech co-founder, right? Mm. Tell me about your 50 artists. Yeah, so they're, they're from all around the world. There's no two artists that are playing with the same type of style. They're all very, very different. And for an artist, to get 20% without doing anything is huge. So that's 20% of what do they get? 20% of the 645. So, so what's the printer get? The printer gets 50%. So our costs, including GSTs, Ooh. $2.95 per card. Including postage. Including the postage. Yeah, so, oh, okay, so artist gets 20, yep, printer gets 50, and you keep 30. 30%. Guys, very impressed with you. You're obviously a great team. Have to absolutely give you double ticks based on your valuation. Uh, and I'm not a tech head, I'm out. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ben. You, you guys are in an amazingly competitive space, right? Everyone out there who's got some sort of freelancer workforce that does creative stuff is a potential competitor. Not to mention the postal services of the world and, and a whole bunch of other people struggling for relevance and the way things are changing, going from paper to, to virtual. I'm going to make you an offer. Uh, 250,000 uh, bucks, looking to purchase one third of the company. So 33.3%. Right. Uh, you've got nothing at the moment. You've had 30,000 bucks in sales. You've spent 55 grand to get where you are right now. Uh, I think I'm doing you a big favour. <laughs> the valuation's just gone from 3.57 million to 750,000. Did he just say he's going to do you a favour? <laughs> yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> How'd you feel about that? Uh, it's, it's a lot more than we'd be prepared to give away today. Oh, come on. No, honestly, we, we know that this business has got great potential. Mate, you've so. been around since breakfast, you've got yep. no sales. And that's exactly right, Steve. We've been around since breakfast and we haven't even started marketing. Oh, good answer. I love the way you threw that back in my face. That was really good. OK, guys. 250,000, 30%. No, that's still way too high. Oh, oh come that, on, straight away, no. think about it. And slap back. <laughs> <laughs> Little bottom feeders, that end. You, you guys are so oh, competent. You you're know out, your stuff. babe. That's right, I'm just giving them a bit of mentoring advice. They, they know, they All right, know. mate, okay, that's really interesting. So I'm the bottom feeder, am I? Yeah. Explain to me why his valuation of 3.57 is wrong. You're calling me a bottom feeder and you've already told them valuation sucks. So excuse me, if you'd love to explain that yeah, to me, I'd I'm love to hear. Very simple. This is a tech company going to go somewhere. You didn't exactly make an offer. I just, I just see oh, the execution. So the valuation's fine, is it? Says the vet. Did I say that? Says the vet. You, right. anyway, you, you well, actually said the children can settle down. Ah. Blah, blah. I love your business. I Thank really you. love Thank it. You. I believe in the, the power of words and gifting. Yep. I love it. Absolutely love it. I hate your valuation. 7%. That says to me we weren't really looking for an investor They've done their today. numbers. They know their shit. I, I didn't ask you. There may be a little bit of wiggle room in that, but not to the extremes of 30%. Yeah, that's a lot of wriggle, isn't it? That's too far. But you, you, you're serious. You, you're talking about something starting with a one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know we're being tough, but we, 
We... You're not being tough, you're being, you're being silly. We believe in the product so strongly. I don't think they're here to do a deal and I'm really pissy. No, we are, we are definitely here. No, you're not. Patrick and Tom have turned down two offers already. 250,000, 30%. No, that's still way too high. And their refusal to budge... We believe in the product so strongly. ..is causing a stir amongst the sharks. I don't think they're here to do a deal and I'm really pissy. No, we are, we are definitely here. No, you're not. Man, I don't often grieve Naomi. I've never grieved Naomi now, I think about it. <laughs> but I'm thinking today I might that I don't know if you're here for a deal. So 33%, 30%, are you going to make an offer? No, I just want to have a conversation. First of all, I know how hard it is to acquire customers and I know what it costs. I have 500,000 customers every year. Yep. I also have a business-to-business -business gifting business and that also has hundreds of thousands of possibilities of sending these cards. So if you want speed to market, I can give that to you, but I'm not doing it for 7%. Why would I? So I'm making an offer of $250,000, but I want to be your equal partner. So that's 33 and a third percent. That's what Steve But said. I bring you a million customers. Well, yeah, it, it, look, to be honest, 33 is, is just way too high. But you need to count on something that you're going to accept, otherwise... I, sure. I, I think this is all a bit silly, right? You're just sitting no. here stamping your feet saying, nut, nut, nut. He has said 10 percent. So, yeah, 10 percent, something close to 10 percent would be great. You've got to pull your head out of the clouds here, guys, because mm -hmm. that, is, that, is, that is ridiculous. I mean, and every measure, th this is so tough to swallow. Yeah, sure. This is, this is where we're at today. This is, we've, we've only just launched. This is seed round funding. Uh, there's, it'll be a different, different story later. Oh, so, so, so now we're trapped in the rules of the game because you've asked for 250, right? Yes. We've got to, I'm a professional investor. I don't do stupid deals, <laughs> regardless what they think. I don't do stupid deals. Yeah, sometimes. So, um, it does. Uh, I, I need to do something that's going to that's going to treat our capital with the respect it deserves, and and 10 percent, mate. That's 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 adventurous to be polite. Is it less adventurous at 15? 15, we're getting better. Okay. How, how coachable do you think Patrick is? Yeah, I don't. Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, but I do like a person who knows their own mind. Yeah. Um, no, I think he's holding his ground. Well, he's obviously been in business before. Look, kudos to getting something off the ground. I think your valuation is, uh, I won't say ludicrous, but very ambitious. And unfortunately for you, I have other options. You know, I've often said deals are like buses and there's always another one coming. So I'm thinking, what could I do with my 250,000 and could I get a better return somewhere else? So no disrespect to you, I'm sure you'll get your business going, but I think in, in this case, I'm out. So this is what I'm going to do, and it is my final offer and the final time I'm speaking, OK? So if I do what I say I'm going to do, I want 15% now, but I want 25% in six months' time after I've delivered you those customers. So you want a 10% you option? A 10% option, exactly. How does that work? Well, my ask is 15% for $150,000 plus a $100,000 loan that converts to 25% in six months' time if I've delivered what I said I was going to do. That converts to an extra 10%, you mean? Correct. I don't see why I should give you 15 years of my experience and my customers so that I can sit on the side for 10%. Yeah, it no. just, it's rude. Yeah, we understand. And I suppose the counter argument is that that would say that the only way that our business succeeds is with your partnership. No, it's speed to market. I, I don't disagree, um, but we are very confident that this business can grow. So that is my final offer. OK. And your answer? Uh, no. Oh. You guys have just got ice running through your veins, haven't you? <laughs> And have you you've said no to these two? No, I'm, con I'm considering 15 points. I'm oh, you are, 15 OK. Points. But just Janine's second. out. Oh, God. I'm, I'm sitting here going, right, I'll go in at 22. I'll go in at 18. But every time I come in to go in, you say no to someone at those levels. <laughs> I can't get my head around that the valuation that you've got, and I've tried my hardest to try and get there. I'm out. OK. 
It's a shame. You know you want me as a partner. We absolutely we do. do. We, we do. We'll but put an offer in. I have put an offer in. I'm at 15% yep. for 150000 with an option to take it to 25. What if I reduce that option to another 5%? 15 going to 20? 15 going to 20 after six months that I've delivered the customers. I'm at, I'm at, mate, I'm at, uh, I'm at 20. 20. OK. All right. For, for 250, right? Just 250. 250, yeah, yeah. OK. All right. So the same thing. So okay. we get to the same e end. Yes. Game. Yep. But it's, it's contingent on you delivering. Correct. So could, could we put a number around how many customers you think you can bring us? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I know your numbers. All right. You'll know how many. I, I think that's get. a fair, you know, this is a partnership. It's a yeah, two-way street. We'd like to make it contingent on you being able to bring us 50,000 customers. Oh. It's not too many. Compared to one million, it's a... Exactly. Nothing. Our plan was to bring 30 <laughs> by the end of 2017, so this would be a small roll. So I will say 50,000 customers... OK. ..after six months of integration. OK. Let's do a deal! Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, hey. You did come looking for a deal, yeah, I did. Sure. I thought sure. you were just so hard Thank to get. <laughs> well done, <laughs> happy. Well played. Yeah, 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 seriously. We expect a greeting card from you in the morning. <laughs> sure. We already gave you one. OK. I want another One's one. enough. That's out of profits. Forget it, boys. Hi Sharks, thanks for having us. My name's Anthony Kane and this is my wife Rebecca and we're from Adelaide. We're seeking $100,000 for a 10% share of Cartalot, Australia's first foldable cart. So we'd like to show you how our cart works and the magic of it. And this is it. Nice. Voila. Oh. We have two models. Our on-road model is very good for gravel and grass and all hard surfaces. And our off-road model has the wide wheel, which is very good for the sand and the beach. We have a range of accessories that we design as well. We've been trading for 14 months. We've sold 1,680 carts. Where sales, as of yesterday, reached $245,000, uh, with a gross profit of 113. We've just gone international, selling into New Zealand through Bunnings Warehouse. We're at a stage where we've done so much in such a short time and we really need some help to go to the next level. Just confirming, Anthony and Rebecca, $100,000 for 10%, so you're valuing your company at $1 million. That's we cool. do. So where did this idea come from? We were on a family holiday overseas and we saw something very moderately like this. Uh, it blew our minds. We realised very quickly that nothing like this was available here. So, yeah, we decided... Um, We'd have a crack at it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I want to buy a few of them. When I get on a plane, I'm always carting crap to and from... Crap, my luggage. <laughs> to and from the aircraft, which is, you know, backwards and forwards, backwards yes. and forwards. But, and you can put it in the aircraft when you get to the other end That's too, it. so... Yeah, not as hand luggage, but we... No, I did. You're talking about private. Pri private. Oh, luggage. sorry. Yeah. 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 I haven't had that experience yet. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Some people. Yeah. yeah. They're big market size in Australia for those who own their own plane. <laughs> what did you do before you designed these carts, Anthony? For the last nearly 30 years, I've been a firefighter. A firefighter? Yes. Great. Yeah, and I have a, a background in pharmaceutical sales ripping. I was rep of the year a few times, I might say. Just saying, yeah. <laughs> we can tell, Rebecca, by the way. You don't need to tell us the bleeding obvious. <laughs> You want a million bucks for your business. So just walk me through slowly how you can justify such a big number in such a young business. We have seen from show to expo that we've done and our online sales have increased and increased. The last show that we just did, we took $21,000 in three days. So, you know, we were drinking more at the end. <laughs> <laughs> There's others around. I mean, there's cheap ones about. There, there are, but they're not um, anywhere near the quality. Ours is a powder-coated steel, 
Yeah, we've been careful. People's loyalty, people's loyalty to quality is as thick as their wallet. Yeah, but yeah. I think Australians are smart. I think, honestly, I think Australians are smart. You haven't been in retail very long, have you? It looks pretty sturdy. You're not going to be needing to buy one every year. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's you're going to get a lot, lot of repeat, repeat. A lot of repeat business. But there's 23 million people in Australia. So, you know, we know that our potential, and then we can look at the world. I can imagine, Rebecca, you're very good at spreading the word. <laughs> I do my I best. I think you could sell ice to the Eskimos, <laughs> which is a wonderful thing, yeah. but one of the things we try and do is work out the difference between the person who has a natural ability and the business model. Yeah. And one other thing, Naomi, which is of interest it's is... It's probably time to listen, though, right? Adelaide couple Anthony and Rebecca started a small side business selling folding carts and made it profitable in just 14 months. They have valued their business at an ambitious $1 million. I think, honestly, I think Australians are smart. You haven't been in retail very long, have you? But it's Rebecca's chatter that's the biggest obstacle. And one other thing which is of interest is... It's probably time to listen though, right? Rebecca, you would know the first rule of sales is to learn to listen. OK, so what's a cart cost to make? The cart costs about $80. $80, bucks, all right, excellent. What would be a wholesale price? Off-road for $180, the on-road for $160. And the recommended retail price? $219, no, so $219 is the on-road model, and $239 for the off-road. It's not a lot. Large for a retailer. At the moment, the numbers you've told me, that's only a 25% margin to the retailer and, and they will choke and say, not interested. Sure. So we've got to adjust that margin between you and the retailer a little bit more fairly. Hey, uh, Rebecca and Anthony, I've, I've got a... Um, I've, I've come to a decision here. Uh, I'm going to be a customer. I'm going to buy three of them. For some reason, I can't get excited about the business opportunity. I'm, I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you anyway. Stay. Thanks a lot. I'm struggling because you're, you're a formidable couple. Um, it's a very lovely product. I love your design. I think you'll make a very good living out of it. But the barriers to entry aren't there for me as an investor to scale this. I'm out. I do think it's a great product and I swear to God I'll be using it when I go to the beach with all these, all the kids that I sort of have to take all the stuff with. So the difficult thing is even though you've got accessories, it's one product and so it's sort of one of the things that you sort of put a bit of a, a red a bit black mark against. I'm not excited about it. I'm out. We know our potential is huge. We were really hoping that you'd be um, as excited as our followers and, and the world out there. I love your passion. You're selling it and you've created a profitable business within 14 months and that's incredibly commendable. But for me, today, it's not an investment. So I'm out. OK, thank, thank you. you and then there was one. I am wondering what you would be like to work with. Um, I'm really curious about that. Right now, I'm absolutely sitting on the fence. We probably neglected to mention to you that all and our... And just, there's no steak knives in there, is there? Not yet. No, no, no steak knives. No, no. Right. no. <laughs> is, the, is the corporate logo in that we um, rolled out a few months ago has been... Stop. OK. <laughs> 100,000 for 10% is a completely unrealistic um, expectation. So I am going to make you an offer. It is dependent on getting into a national retailer and getting the price down. But it's $100,000 for 45% of your cost. Oh, 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 look at your face! <laughs> I don't want to sell a thousand a year. No. I want to sell a hundred thousand a year. Well, wow, that's a big, big chunk. Just keep in mind what it now values your business at. Less than a quarter million bucks, and she wants to destroy your margins. But otherwise, it's a great deal. He's not helping. He's not helping, is he? I'm exceptionally helping. <laughs> 
I think it's a terrible deal. The business. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Naomi. We're just wondering, would you be willing to bend a bit on the 45% and possibly come back a bit? At, at 40%. So your counter offer is 40%? Yeah. You have a deal. OK. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, well done. Oh. Congratulations. I think you like Maui for celebration. <laughs> Congratulations. Good on you. This is going to be great. Hey, <laughs> you killed it in there. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. First into the tank tonight is a young entrepreneur with a very tasty proposition. I'm feeling way too excited. I'm full of confidence right now and cannot wait to go in there and make sure I spice up the Shark Tank. Hello Sharks, this is Ace from Melbourne and I'm the founder of Your Flavour Seasonings. And today I'm seeking for $80,000 in return for 10% of my company. Sharks, healthy eating is the most important uh, and vital aspect of life, and it's great for mind, body and soul. In Australia, our health food and supplement industry turn over roughly $1.8 billion a year, and still increasing by 10 to 15% each year, and yet we are one of the most unhealthy nations in the world. At Your Flavour, our goal is to keep seasonings 100% gluten-free, vegan, paleo-friendly, keeping low salt levels, at the same time, making it more enjoyable, funful, and tasty. Your Flavour Seasoning brand is Australia's only seasoning brand which makes onion and garlic-free seasonings, great for people who follow low FODMAP diet. So Sharks, I need your help to take my small home business to the next level, and together, we can give Australia a reason to season. Thank you. Oh, hey. Good job. A reason to season. That's yes. That's good. OK, Ace, so you're looking for $80,000 for 10% of your business. So you're valuing it at $800,000. That's correct, yes. OK, so tell us a bit more about the product. Yeah, great. OK, I'll bring some products over. Can you start this in first? No. OK. You can give him two, cos he feels left last. out. Oh, there you go, you oh, better get two. two. Hey. So, in total, we have um, eight flavours all together. It's been 15 months so far since I've been running this as a small home business. And so far, my online sales are $455,000. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. Go again. Say that again. It's 455000 I like it. After 18 months? 15. Uh, just a little over 15 months, yeah. So tell me your background. Why are you an expert in this area? Well, roughly um, end of 2014, me and a couple of my friends, we tried to go on a diet. And by the fourth day, I was hating my life. Having broccoli, chicken, three times a day, four days a week. It's like torture. I know, it is <laughs> mental torture. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go find some flavours and see what we can flavour the seasonings with. I have nothing to do with seasonings or cooking in the past. I work in a corporate company and I resigned to focus full time on this. Good man, good man. However, I still have a part-time job to keep my weekly expenses on the go as I'm not taking any money from the business. And what's your part-time job? I work as, uh, at Coles as a, a retail assistant. Good on you. I want to keep there because I just love the people I work with and I only work Saturday and Sundays. <laughs> Monday to Friday, I'm full-time on this business. Uh, good stuff. You said you've got a home kitchen or where is it being so done? all the experiment happened in the initial phase in my kitchen, right? So what, I mean, the mates here must... No, no, you have no idea how angry my mum was. Oh, oh. So, so you live with your mum? <laughs> well, I live with my parents and yeah. she was on the verge of kicking me out of the house. <laughs> yes, she do. The entire house smelled like spices. <laughs> Funny, that. Did your mum help you? She helps me all the time. She's the best unpaid worker ever. <laughs> oh, like... mum, sweat equity, I hope. You're making 450 grand. Why aren't you paying your poor old mum? Well, she helps me every, all the time. And, <laughs> you know, I never say no to her for anything. She's just proud of you. Absolutely. Right, I'm dying to find out how much money you're making on 450,000 bucks in yeah, sale. Yeah, so um, I have netted... Um, 
20%. You netted 20% after after everything? After all the expenses? 90 grand. So what, what would one of these cost on average to make? Three dollars. Three bucks. What do you sell it for? Uh, Twenty dollars online single bottles. Including shipping. Bucks for this bottle. Yes, that's right. But that including How that come you only keep a ninety thousand bucks? What's going on there? I mean, I'm sorry, but if you if you were actually it's costing you three bucks and you're selling it for twenty. Yeah. Right. And you're net you're only netting ninety? Yeah. So there's something something's not something's not stacking up here. Because I invest every single dollar which I've made, even from the profits back in the business. I understand that. To push so how much do you spend orders? in marketing per year? In, in that 15 months for 450 yep. grand, how much would you spend on marketing? Anywhere between 175,000 to 200,000. So you're you're spending a lot on marketing. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I teamed up with a social media influencer for a barbecue flavor. She is a fitness trainer, and she helped me did social media marketing. Great exposure for me, great sales for me, and she gets a reasonable cut for that. She has been great for me. So Ace, your key to success I see now is your digital engagement and your social media strategy. Because <laughs> that's impressive. Ace, you're Ace. Aww. <laughs> right, I know, someone had to say it. Um, the, um, you, your product is really good. I, I really, really like it. Thank you. Um, I think you've got great drive and your great passion. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'll be a customer because I already am a customer. I just bought some online, so it's on its way. Wow, awesome. <laughs> you know, can I just high five you? Yeah, come on, high five. <laughs> high five. Look at that. So well done. I am now a customer of yours, 100%. You're amazing. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to be so much amazing because the competitive space is too big for me. Yes, that's correct. So for me, for this one, I am a customer, but I'm out. Oh, that's OK. Thanks for your time. I mean, there's already a lot of competitors out there, so the question is, what's your competitive advantage? You personally, if we could sort of duplicate you and fly you all around the world and bottle you and stick you on every stand, yep. that would be easy, but we can't. Uh, I mean, I love your enthusiasm. I think you, you've got a good business going for yourself here. You should push the online space. You need to really work on your margins and get your costs down. Yep. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you. Thanks for your time. So, Ace, I'm not buying it, mate. Uh, you know, paleo is supposed to be back to the caveman type diet, and you're giving me a fully processed product. Doesn't fit in. The other thing you've slapped on here is vegan, and I'm thinking, let's just slap paleo and vegan on this and see if we can get into the health food market. Oh, look at all the bloody paleo vegan rot that gets trumped in here, and this is the first guy you give a hard time to. Give me a break. Oh, give Mate, we, see, we, see, we, see so many, we see so many compost balls coming here that are paleo, vegan, God knows what else, all this protein rot. You're doing really well, mate. Just don't listen to him at all, all right? Yeah. I, I, I'm still not buying the health benefits, Ace. Yep. You lost me on trying to convince me this is some new health fad. It's not. So unfortunately, for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Ace. It's such a low barred entry market, mate. I mean, if you put this in the supermarkets and you actually start competing on price, they're going to go, yeah, look, uh, this is selling really well. Why don't we come out with our own low garlic, sugar, onion, whatever it was, yep. and compete against them? They'll just they'll brand you out. Look, if I was thinking that that thing... No, they will do that. No, no, trust me. I would that's, never be at this that point. That's what they, that's what they do every time. I'm looking forward to trying this at lunch. I'm out. Thank you. Thanks for your time. One shark left. A red shark. You see, the thing is, there's not many barriers to entry. So this is a land grab, and what is missing is your brand. Really, what you need more than anything is marketing help. Yep. But I'm also looking at who are you as a leader, as yep. a manager, and could I work with you? Awesome. Could I? Or would I? So, I am going to make you an offer. Great. But you're not going to like it. Ace is seeking $80,000 for a 10% stake in his spice business. Together? we can give Australia a reason to seize it. So far, four of our sharks find the deal unsavoury. You need to really work on your margins and get your costs down. Yep. Only Naomi remains to make an offer. Really, what you need more than anything is marketing help. Yep. So, 
I am going to make you an offer. Great. But you're not going to like it. Ace, the reason why I have to make you this offer yep. is because of the risk, the execution risk. Yep. And I do need to make sure that we check everything from the licenses of your commercial kitchen to your trademarks. Yep. And you actually don't have a background in food technology. Yeah, look, um, you don't have to have a background in something to come up, bring it to the market. Dead right. right. How, many, how many juices did you sell before you started Boost? None. Dead right. So my offer is yep. $80,000 for 50% of your business. Ooh. Ouch. 50%? Run scared. 80,000 80, for 50%. Look, I think um, so far I've worked quite really hard to get to this point and prove that there is a market for it. Giving away 50% just like that is something no startup should do in the first and in the very early and, stages. And no real investor should offer it either, mate. So you're saying no? Well, I would like to counter, okay? Um, and I would say $80,000 for 25%, and I will guarantee you your money back in the first 24 months. If I don't, you get 35%. You've got to be careful making those sort of promises. I agree that there's, 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 a, there's a minefield you, you're about to walk through here, right, with that, with, that, with that counter. Ace, I just need to talk to you about what you've counted, OK? Yep. So you've said, here's 25%, but if it doesn't work out, I'll give you more. Now, that is a disincentive for me to grow your business because I'll end up with more. You see, what you want from me as a business partner is to grow your business. Yep. So I want you to be in 10,000 retail outlets within 24 months. But if I do that, I'll miss out on my next 10%. So you've actually offered me a disincentive to grow your business. Yeah. OK? OK. So I'm going to pretend you didn't say it. Yep. OK? OK. Because that's the way a partnership starts. Right. Is looking after each other. That's right, yeah. OK? So let me repeat my offer to you, which is 50% of your business for $80,000. Yep. OK? So that is my offer. Are you able to come down any less than 50% as it's quite, it's quite high for me? Um, it's half your business. And, um... So I want you to think about how long would it take yep. you to get into 10,000 supermarkets? How long would it take you? Well, it will take because quite a few this years. this is speed to market. Yep. And I want to get a return on that time. Yeah, but that, she, so she's got, I mean, let's face it, like, what, what we're being offered, right, is an opportunity to get on Red Balloon, right? It's Honestly, actually it's, not. I would it's, it's, never it's an online put this... Time. Excuse, I understand excuse what it is, me, but... I would never put this on Red Balloon. That is not do, what do, this do is about. Do you really about. want to put That's this into 10,000 supermarkets? Well, look at your margins right now and understand what's going to happen to your margins. Understand where you make the best amount of money. Yep. 50 points is ridiculous. Yeah. Right? And you, you, you can't do this for 50 points. You can listen to him all you like. Yep. I have no intention of turning this into an experience gift. Yep. So that is not my intention. I'm talking about retailers. He's out. The only deal you've got is her. You've got to make a decision. I'm the only friend he's got by the sound of it as well. So it's really up to you. If you want to listen to him, go right ahead. But then the deal will be off the table. I know what I bring to the market. You either want it or you don't. And I've talked to you out of the other deal because it's a disincentive for me as a partner. Yep. Naomi. Would you accept $80,000 for 40% and we will make it work? 40 points. And, you know, I came here with a concrete offer not to go more than 25%. And... Well, stick your gun, son. Stick it 25% and put it back to her. And if it doesn't work, say, I'll be back next year to pitch it to you at double the valuation. You finish, Ace. Finish what you're going to say, Ace. I really think you can bring a lot to the table. And I, I believe together, if you work as a team, 40% is a reasonable chunk um, from someone who is sort of proving the point. I would like you to consider that. Ace?
You have a deal? Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was nerve-wracking. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to give you a hug. Oh, thanks, mate. Oh. You did a great job. What a relief. You did a great job. Awesome. All the best mate, luck, mate. You're going to need it, all right? You're going to need it. <laughs> thank right. you. Thank you. All right. Good luck, guys. Take care. Take care. Take care. Go get him. Go get him, Ace. What a great, great energy. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it happened. Wow. Our next entrepreneur is hoping she can get her message across loud and clear. Hi, my name's Anya and I'm from OneTalk Technology. And we sell talking posters. I've travelled down here from Darwin in the Northern Territory to offer you 20% of my company for $50,000. Where I come from in the Northern Territory, 30% of our population is Indigenous and of those, 63% live in regional and remote areas. And English is sometimes the fourth language that's spoken. And the interesting thing with our product is that you can actually talk to a specific demographic in language, in a community, but in the health and wellbeing space. You literally just press a button and it speaks in language. If you crop in a go, long blue you, you may make him another kind of word. Oh. We say if you got another kind of crop, long blue you must be sick. So just go up and you push it in English? Yep. yep press it up. Cough that won't go away. It's not normal. If you cough all the time, your lungs could be sick. So you make a range of these talking signs, effectively, yes. to educate and channel the local community. Yeah, they're simple. It's a very complex issue, but it's a very simple solution. So, Anya, how long have you been going? So, we've been going over five years. OK. So, we've, we've actually got the innovation patent registered for this, and in those five years, we've turned over more than a million dollars, and our net profit over those five years is about 200,000. G'day, g'day, Anya, Steve. That's excellent, well done. Can you just go through the economics of what do they cost and how do you make money? Okay, so this one here's nearly $1,000. And how do you make money from that? The cost per unit to produce it is about 240. Roger that, right, okay. So your revenue source is mostly through government agencies or? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you mention something about an innovative patent? Yes, with the talking posters. Right. Yes. So then we can take this worldwide to other advertising and printing companies and bill these for us? Yes. Under licence? Yes. Do you want to show us how you, how you build them or how you make them? One that I prepared earlier. Ah, oh, that's what we love. We love a de- oh ah. <laughs> Oh, that's what we love. I wasn't expecting to love this, but I do. <laughs> That's hilarious. What did the vet say? The sound chip isn't long enough. <laughs> you are an incredibly impressive businesswoman. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> You've absolutely missed the revenue opportunity of this business. You know that, don't you? Because, But I'd pay if I could customise that and have some sort of really crazy cool poster. So you would like a poster of me in your hands? Oh, I'd have to put a different sound for there, Janine, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I love you, Steve. <laughs> I, I would pay more for one of those customisable shark posters as a piece of, you know, advertising or as a, as a, as a corporate memento so you can fund more of those doing good in Indigenous communities. That's your potential revenue stream. Well, Janine could be standing in every one of your Boost Juice stores. Oh, that'd drive business away, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's just such a joy. So let's let's stay with that for a minute. So you haven't taken it and gone to you know, McDonald's or someone else, so you know you can push this button and see the latest promotion. That's why I'm here. I was thinking that's why you're here. In putting in fifty thousand dollars, what do you think the the return on that is going to be? I think the return is is really good because there's no debt in the company. It's what does really good mean, Anya? <laughs> well, what's potential? What's the price of potential? I, I can't put a price on yeah, that. Yeah, but we're, we're investing in you, right? So you've got to get us excited. We're not here to get you excited. What I want out of an entrepreneur, someone who stands there, is to oh, I need to go. If I don't get on board here, I'll get left behind.
Lorimer is seeking $50,000 for 20% of her talking poster business, One Talk. Who else could be sick? But her lack of financial forecasting... I think the return is, is really good. What does really good mean, Anya? ..has put her in the firing line. You've got to get us excited. I need to go. If I don't get on board here, I'll get left behind. Come on now, just, you're passionate. Now, sell, I am sell passionate. the future with passion yeah. as well. I am. I've ticked the hard box with, with what I've been doing in the social services space, and that's where the idea actually originated from. The, the commercial potential for this is huge, and that's what I'm looking for. I mean, you're clearly a, a, a wonderful lady with a mission, and I, I like what you're trying to do, but I don't see the business model behind it. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. So, I'm out. Thanks. Look, Anya, I, I think you need to find the appropriate revenue model. I, I'm not sure it's the path you're on. I, I do wish you all the best. If there's any way I can help you get an audience in, in Brisbane when you come down, I'm, I'm more than willing to, to, to muck in and give it a hand, but I'm out and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Glenn, what do you think? I think what you're doing here is terrific and, and um, I th I'm hoping there's been some positive suggestions around how to continue the journey, but unfortunately it's not something gelling with me as an investor, so at this point, I'm out. Three sharks are out, two sharks left. Where we're moving as a business and where all of my colleagues are moving as a business, and this is Australia-wide, is away from paper. We're moving towards digital and the prices are dropping dramatically. But God damn it, you are a very impressive woman. So I don't think I can move forward with this deal. I'm out. And then there was one. I want to know what my button says. For me, it's a privilege to be part of an Australian innovation story. You know, Anya, it is a privilege to be a part of an Aussie innovation story. I don't say that lightly because... We'll make an offer. <laughs> I was about to. Now, back in your box, I don't like being told what to do. I will make you an offer. I'm not going to nickel and dime you because I actually don't think you've asked for enough money. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to offer you the $50,000 for 20%. Actually, maybe I should look tougher. I'm just pleased you finally got there. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I'm definitely taking the offer. <laughs> I came here to do it, so thank you. Well done, John. Thank you. Mm. It's really a great product. Thank you. Can we keep this? Yeah, you can keep it. No, oh, no, awesome. no, 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 Oi, put it back. That would be, I own 20% of that. Don't, don't let him take that. <laughs> Our next entrepreneur is looking to expand his company and change the face of body surfing with his eco-friendly product. Hi, Sharks. My name's Chris. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Wollongong on the south coast of New South Wales. I'm the owner and designer of Ecto Hand Planes. Today, I'm asking for $100,000 for 20% of my business. Ecto Hand Planes developed out of my university research into the sustainability of surfboards, where I realised that surfboards aren't being recycled. So I developed a contemporary take on the good old Aussie body surfing hand plane by recycling broken surfboards into body surfing hand planes. And it's particularly fun with our GoPro mount, which means you can capture all your waves and wipe out. <laughs> the product has won three design awards, both nationally and internationally. The design's registered in five different countries. I'm stoked to say that Ecto is a leading body surfing brand in Australia. We're stocked in 15 surf shops on the east coast of Australia. And just recently, we got listed with David Jones and we're now in 10 of their stores as well. Now, look, I know normally sharks and body surfers don't get along, <laughs> but today I'm hoping we can do a deal and body surf a wave of success. 
Oh, well, well, well done. done. Thanks, Chris. So that's 20% for $100,000. So you're valuing it at $500,000. Great. Correct. Can you bring a couple over? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Beauty before I. You wanted a blue one, see? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, blue. Here we Beautiful. go. Thank you very much. Here we go. So, Chris, tell us why this. Yeah, so I trained as a graphic designer. Right. And I've always loved surfing and design. And this product puts both of those things together. And where do you work from? I've been working full-time. So this has been a hobby business, and I've grown it on the side with no marketing budget, and people who ride them, they're growing. The other surf shops are saying, get these. So this is coming out of your garage at the moment? Um, they're manufactured in Bali. I don't know a damn thing about surfing, but uh, I like business. So can you talk some numbers so I can just understand whether this is actually business or not? Yeah, sure. So um, today, I've turned over um, $80,000. Over what period of time, mate? Um, five years. It's a hobby business. Bloody, bloody earth, it's a hobby. From that, I've made 10. Now, that number is low because of the intellectual property costs. Oh, so you spent money yeah. getting designs registered. OK, right, Correct. right. So what's the cost and what's, what do you sell it for? Um, $219.95. I'm and sorry, the 220 bucks. Yeah. You sell it for? And, and what do you make? What, what's it cost you in materials and time? Um, $50 delivered to door. What's a surfboard cost? Oh, $800, $1,200. So do I understand that these sorts of surfing accessories are available in the market, but yours are the recycled version? Or are you saying this design is exclusive to you? The shape of the board is, it, is what I have the design registration on. Um, there are other hand planes in right. the markup. So it's this particular shape. Correct. And the fact that you guarantee you're always using recycled. Correct. How much do they have to change it by to not breach a design registration? That's a good question. Um, the standard rule seems to be 10%. You've actually got no real advantage. I mean, someone can change this by 10% and go, great, now they're like 150 bucks. Ekdal as a brand has been building for five Ekdal's years. Ekdal as a brand doesn't exist, mate. I'm sorry, you, you've got you've done eighty thousand bucks over five years. I'm not trying to take away from the effort you've done, right? But as a brand, that's not an answer. Okay. So, how are you managing production? What sort of volumes are you now looking at? Last year, uh, I sold two hundred and twenty. Overall, I've sold six hundred and sixty. So each year, I've just built up slowly, and that's why I've come to Shark Tank. Because I know that with one of you as a mentor, rather than growing like this, I can grow like this because I... Chris, how many are you going to sell this summer to say Ecto is now a brand in the surf market? Um, this, this year, I'd like to be at least 400 units. 400 units? Chris, I was expecting you to say 4,000 or 40,000, because, I mean, that's the only way an investor's going to get their money back. But 400 units, seriously, <laughs> mate, with a, with a, your margin's only going to be about $50. So you're going to make two grand this summer. You need to go to every single major surf distributor, because it'll turn the light bulb on instantly. And if you're just going to talk 400 units, the whole market's going straight past you. 400 shows me no indication of the size of the market and the opportunity, and maybe that you're willing to go out there and pursue it as hard as others are, to be quite honest. I, I think I might have misunderstood that, that <laughs> question. Um, <laughs> four, four, 400 is, is what, what, I, what I could do now, but if I plan it properly, there's a thousand surf shops in Australia. It's just a matter of getting the, getting the Chris, money to get the stuff. Chris, it's not about money. It's actually not about money. Get off your ass and go and do it. 2013, you won an award for the design, right? And things come and go pretty quickly. So what concerns me is the tenacity to get this out there. People love the colourful, fun, creating stuff. It's the grunt that people get bored with. Honestly, I've, I can do it. I've driven... Oh, you can do it, but you haven't done it. That's the yeah. point we've been actually making here. Because, been because... I've no idea it was 2013. If I knew that, I would have gone harder at you before. <laughs> because quite seriously, you just had also said two-thirds of your sale are effectively wholesale. Mm -hmm. Which means you're making less than the, the delta between 220 and 50 bucks. What are you selling on wholesale for? $104. All right, so you're making 54 bucks on two-thirds of your stock. And you I'm out. Thank you. 
So Chris, what we want to know, seriously, have you got the courage to go full time, quit your day job and get on with this? Chris is seeking $100,000 for 20% of his eco-friendly body surfing business. Steve is out. I'm out. Thank you. And the remaining sharks are questioning Chris's commitment. Have you got the courage to get on with this? Can this laid-back body surfer seal the deal? Absolutely. 100%. Prove it, though. Pr pr I've, look, part of... I've pr proved it to you. Part of my surfboard sustainability research, I collected a thousand broken surfboards. And I drove from here to Queensland and collected every broken board, of dumpsters, you name it. Like you can Google 1000 Surfboard Graveyard and you'll see the work ethic that I've got. It was a big project and I did it on my own and I knocked on people's doors. I've got what it takes, but I need the money and it's been a long journey to work out how to manufacture this so that someone will pay 220 and not buy a piece of plastic. Chris, I've got to say, your designs are beautiful. And actually getting all the offcuts and bin dive. <laughs> yeah, dumpster dive. <laughs> dumpster dive. Yeah. For your products, yeah, good on you. Oh, gee, you're really likable. You are seriously likable. Look, oh, I love the product. Really like the product. Oh. Give me a couple of minutes to think. But I'll tell you what, I want to buy one. Because <laughs> I'm a got a place at Noosa, one that the kids and I could use. What do you reckon about the, yeah, the green? Green, that's my favourite yeah, colour. tropical green. That'll Done. be perfect for Noosa. Done. Cash deal. Thanks, mate. No worries. Thanks, Ben. Chris, as you can see, I'm a customer, but unfortunately, I think you've got to find a better business partner. I'm out. Thanks, man. I agree, you're a classic case of a creative designer, but I don't think you need money. You need a partner who has a marketing brain because you actually don't have a clue about how to market your own product. I'm out, but I wish you luck. Thanks. So the three of us are out, two ladies still in. Chris, I love you, I love you. Not love you, love you, <laughs> love you. Um, History's not working for me, and I can't quite foresee the business model just yet. I'm out. Thanks, Sam. History might not be working, but that doesn't predicate the future. The difficulty is, though, the way businesses are valued is on past performance. Unless you have absolutely massive growth, which you don't, your valuation is difficult. But I am going to make you an offer. <gasps> because I think this will be sad if we don't support Aussie ingenuity and great design. So, is this a charity offer? It's either a good business or it's not. No, you take the money. Just whatever she offers. Go. You know, Chris, I actually agree with Andrew. You need a partner. So, for that reason, I'm offering you $100,000 for 50% of your business. Well, there's a definition of partner for you. <laughs> now, I know you came in only offering 20%, but really, if we're going to get this to market, we have to do it quickly. And what you will need to do is go full-time in the business, but also I need to be able to see that this business can support you. So we need to work on the business model, find, in my opinion, the licensing and the IP. With 50%, that's a significant amount more than I was willing to give away. Yeah, you came actually looking for 20% for 100,000. 20%, so 50% is a lot. Um, how will you help me as a mentor to and, and make that 50% really? See, this is the point. It's about seeing the vision. I have a vision not for 400 in the next summer. I have 40,000 in the summer after that. I'm, I'm going to say yes. Oh, yeah. Good on you, Chris. Ride the wave. Well 
Chris, congratulations. Thank you. you know, it is thank a matter you. of, come on, we just got to get on with it. Yeah, thank you. Oh, well thanks, Janine. No worries. Really. Ride that way. Yes. Congratulations. Woo! See ya. Stevie, that was not a charity offer. Of course it's a charity offer. It is not is a charity nothing? offer at yeah. all. Next into the tank is Laurie, who's staking her business future on catching the sharks in a friendly mood. I do have a potty mouth. Hopefully that will make me a pot of gold. And hopefully they'll like my products. We're inappropriate, so not everyone's going to like our products. I hope they have a sense of humour. Because if they don't, it's going to be a disaster. Hello, Sharks. My name's Laurie, and I'm the founder and owner of the Inappropriate Gift Co. I'm here today seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the business. The Inappropriate Gift Co. solves the problem of where to go if you're looking for a unique gift for a friend or family member with a cheeky and inappropriate sense of humour. <laughs> and we bring you a one-stop shop, a curated online store specialising in inappropriate gifts. We source our gifts from a range of Australian and international suppliers, as well as create our own product range that you won't find anywhere else. The idea for the Gift Co. came after a particularly stressful week at work as an HR manager. <laughs> and I thought there must be more fun to life than this. <laughs> so on the 1st of November 2016, I launched my very first basic website with 10 products. Since then, we have sold over 23,600 products to over 9,600 customers across 36 different countries. Mm. Revenue to date has been $470,000. Wow, impressive. The Inappropriate Gift Co is at the perfect stage to scale up. And we are looking for your investment, as well as your expertise, to help us reach our big, hairy, audacious goal, which is to be the global home of inappropriate gifts. Like it. <laughs> so, Sharks, who wants to be inappropriate with me? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> that's what I think it is. It's yeah. whiskey. Yeah, there you go. Whiskey in a bag. Laurie, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll give you all a goodie bag as well. Oh, I've got thank a goodie you. bag. Yeah. Okay. okay. What do we got? I hope you have a sense of humour, sharks. You're about to find out. We're about to find out. Don't piss me off. I'm skilled at neutering. Very good. Spot on. <laughs> Everyone knows Naomi. She is usually effing fabulous. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I sit next to an idiot. <laughs> what is your say? What have I got? I want to see a. Yeah, oh, I didn't get bad. one. No, I didn't get one. Oh. No, I didn't get one. Oh, he's lying. He's so lying. Steve. <laughs> well done, Laura. Well done. Job. You're looking for an investment of $100,000 for 10% valuing your business at a million dollars. Yes. And so when did you step full time into this business? I finished work as an HR manager in November 2017. I've got a, um, a great partner called Budget Ben. I love him to pieces. And he said, honey, you can do whatever you want as long as you bring home net the same amount of money as you're making in your HR job. And so just quickly, looking at the numbers, $470,000 in 15 months is spectacular for a starting business. Thank well you. done. Thank you. What is the net on that? So I work on a um, gross margin of 40% and a net margin of 30%. Essentially, you're making before you pay yourself about 150 grand a year. Yes. OK, cool. What's, what's in your gross margins? Do you, do you include customer acquisition in your gross No, expenses? I haven't actually looked at my customer acquisition rate yet because I haven't done any, I suppose, advertising, paid advertising. So it's all been organic You've through... done no paid advertising? No, it's been organic wow. through my You've social media. You've done 470k media. in 15 months of no paid advertising? Yes. One of my um, posts on social media went um, global, so it hit nearly 9 million views. What was it? I just posted one of my mugs. The mug was, I'm not feeling very talky today, and then there was um, some swear words after that. Well, come on, give us a hit at both barrels. Give us. A... Okay, I'm not feeling very talky today, off you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice. Do they come in a set? <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need four. No, I think for the first time in four years, it's been genuinely funny. <laughs> 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 um.
How do you achieve your big hairy audacious goal? Sure. So our um, plans, are, we're on track, regardless of, um, of, of this, to reach $1 million worth of sales at the end of this year. And then 2019 is 3 million. And then 2020, 20. So we want 20 million okay. in the year 2020. 2020, 20. I like that. That's fantastic. Um, and in order to do that, we will need North America, um, as well as the UK. All of you have taken a business this size and scaled it up nationally, internationally, and probably most importantly, profitably. We will do it, but we will do it a lot quicker and a lot smarter and probably lose a lot less money doing it with any of your help. So, Laurie, you're a no-brainer. Any one of us could invest in you, get our money back. I see that. You're organised, you're buttoned down, and I'm sure you'd be delighted to work with, not to mention a little amusing at times. Thank you. OK, who's in? So, so Laurie, I'm, I'm in. Uh, I'll go the 100K for 20%. 100k, 18%. 100k, 15%. <laughs> I was going to be a lot harsher than that, so I'm going to actually bow out because I, I know where you're going is going to be a hard journey. You're going to burn some serious cash as you scale up, but you have to. Uh, good luck. I'm out. Thanks, Lee. I know the road head ahead for you, and you need way more than $100,000 to do that in terms of really the scale. So the deal that I'm going to suggest to you is $100,000 for 15%, but then another $100,000 for another 10% if we deliver to you and double the size of your business inside of 12 months. So let me summarise, Laurie. Steve's offered you 20% for your 100,000. Janine, 18%. I've offered you 15%. And Naomi's offering you the 100,000 for the 15%, but she's also offering another 100,000 in finance capital. I've got 100 for 12 and a half percent. Are you on Amazon? No. I'm back in. I'm going to match Steve, 100K for 12 and a half percent, because I'll introduce you to the Amazon guys. OK, what are you going to do? Can I talk to my husband? Oh, he's here, you isn't want he? to bring him out just to bring stir him, him up a bit? Don't sure. talk to your husband, Budget sure. Ben. Budget Ben. <laughs> Come on, Budget Ben, bring him out. All right, go talk to your husband. Thank you. Let's have a look at this stuff. How'd you go? I got deals from all five of them. <sighs> <laughs> I've got to choose which one. All right, OK. You so, wonder. I've got... Naomi at 100,000 for 15%. And then um, she will bring an extra 100,000. Andrew, 15% for 100 grand. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, Glenn is 12.5%. And so is Steve. And Janine is 18%. So. All for 100 grand. So 18%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love all of them. Yeah. Um, but let's go. Okay. Let's do a deal. You'll cook budget pen, by the way. Okay. This is Ben. Hello, Hello budget ben. ben. Hey, Ben. Budget, budget to ben. the tank. Budget Thank you. Ben, fantastic. Budget Ben. <laughs> Someone has to be. <laughs> That's good. So you must be very really proud of her. I am very extremely proud. She She's done fantastic. an amazing job here today. We have a lot of people stand there. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't have their numbers. There's too much ego, not enough drive. Yeah. She's got it all, you know. You, you got the right yeah. partner. Laurie, I've decided to make my deal easier. Oh. And just offer $250,000 for 25%. Oh. In one up, because you're going to need the money. So you've got to enjoy the journey as much as the results. You enjoy the journey more with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. I would love to work with you. Oh! Oh, no. uh, <laughs> some things, some things come and go. Well, well done, Laurie. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, well she only ever had eyes for me, just pointing out. Look, Have a drink. Have you? a drink on us. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. That was so much fun. Thanks for the gift. Well done. Well done. Hey, well done. Really well done. Take care. Well done. Mm. Damn.
damn. No, no. You know what? She wore red for red. She, she, she picked values. She, she wanted Naomi. Yeah. We had no hope. That was That's fantastic. Awesome. That was brilliant. Loved every minute of that. Uh, wanted Naomi because it's an obvious choice. You know, she's in yeah. the gifting business. I'm so happy. First into the tank tonight is a brother-sister-sister sister team with a business that's taking on one of the sharks at their own game. Samantha. Wait, hey, I'm coming. Hey, I'm Samantha. I'm Rose. And I'm Kesa. And we're three siblings from Sydney who are here to offer the sharks a sweet deal that they won't be able to resist. Our product is an absolute game changer and it's going to disrupt the entire gift giving industry. So more orders means we need a bigger warehouse, especially for our big occasions where we were at capacity this year. Um, so we're looking at moving as soon as we can. You want some lahan bhaji? I do. We've worked hard to be able to retire our parents and do the best for the next generation. I need a holiday. <laughs> We'd love a deal with the Sharks because we're ready to expand our business nationally and internationally. We've been discussing which shark we would go with, but to be honest, every one of those sharks has built an empire, so we would be open to any shark wanting to join our little Lebanese family. So possible. we're looking for a sibling and an investor? Yes. Hey Sharks, my name's Samantha. I'm Rose. And I'm Kesa. And together we're three siblings from Sydney who are the founders and owners of dessertboxes.com.au, an online dessert gift giving store here to innovate and disrupt the gift giving industry. We're here seeking $300,000 in exchange for a 10% share in our business. And here is your own surprise dessert box delivery. All right, hey, 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 who gets it first? <laughs> Thank you very much. Squeaky wheel gets the most oil. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so Dessert you. Boxes was born out of our frustration of just having to send and receive boring gifts that will end up dying, being thrown away, never Thank used or at best re-gifted. So we took it upon ourselves to create Dessert Boxes and Donut Bouquets as a fun alternative to gifts and to begin our war against boring gifts. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Mine says, we don't know what we would do without you. <laughs> Mine says, donut, give up on us. Oh. <laughs> Mine's just straight up, want to give us some dough. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's, don't go breaking our hearts. Oh. Stephen, with the program, yours says some words. Um, we like you a whole lot. Oh, it does not say that. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Through our use of social media, we've been able to build an engaged community of over 130,000 people and sell over 30,000 boxes in Sydney Ooh. in our first year alone. And we've recently just expanded the brand into Melbourne. So, Sharks, who wants to be our fourth adopted sibling and help us expand this all around Australia and the world? Man, well done on the pitch. Fantastic. Um, sorry, I put that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, 300 grand, 10%, 3 million bucks. Good valuation. Yep. Well done. You're a family. Why would you start this business as a family? What was the deal there? We're first generation Australian. Um, our parents migrated from Lebanon 35 years ago with not a single dollar in their pocket. And for us, we've always known we've wanted to give back to our parents and show them that the sacrifice that they made for us was worth it at the end. So we left our corporate jobs. Um, we always knew we were going to do something together. We didn't know what though. So what were the corporate jobs? So I was a HR and IR manager. I was a marketing coordinator. And I've got operations background. Oh, that so was very you went convenient. out and practised elsewhere before you started your own job. Very great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so why are you taking on a partner that's not family? Because, you know, that could cause some challenges. We've had this argument, I mean, no, this conversation on numerous occasions, and we're very much aware that we only know what we know. But more than anything, we know each one of you knows how to run a business. For us, it's not necessarily the extensive backgrounds that you may have in those certain areas, but it's how do you get a business from where we started, in a garage, to where it can be, which is what we want to be on a global scale. Take us through the numbers, can you? In our first year of business for Dessert Boxes, we did just over $2 million in sales. Nice. How much? $2 million. Just um, say that slowly, will you? <laughs> $2 million. Yes. Come on. You've got to let it hang. <laughs> From that, we grossed 1.25 and we netted $810,000. <laughs> How is you like them apples? OK, that's looking more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> now Just you've got our attention. I'm now listening. We should have started with that. <laughs> so, so calendar year 2018, what are we going to do? 
Yeah, so, so for our second year of business, um, we're forecasting to make just a little over six million. Oh, come on um, now. Because come we are launching now. into Melbourne, which we've launched last month, right. and we're also planning to launch into Queensland. Impressive first year in business, that's phenomenal. So what is not working? What are your weaknesses that you're hoping one of us may help you with? Yeah, so growth has always been stagnant. So it took us 12 months to move from Sydney to Melbourne where we anticipated it was going to be three on, months. Just done, you've done two million in <laughs> sales in your first year, we're into your second year and you're worried about growth. We're very ambitious. Cash in the bank, currently? Yeah, yeah. Do you mean in terms of how much cash do you have in the bank? 1.4. 1.4 bricks in the bank right now. What are you doing here? <laughs> Who's your competitor? Well, we, we see anybody in the gift giving industry as a competitor of ours, and we've why been... Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> you know, there, there are a lot of other companies out there that deliver boxes of stuff. What, why are you winning so well? Well, look, we're constantly innovating. Um, so we definitely do things not only better, but we definitely do it differently. So, for example, we've launched a finger where you can send somebody the finger to let them know what you really think of Seriously? them. Show me a finger. I would like to I want to see a finger. Leave it close so you get the element of surprise. Okay. <laughs> Give us a look. <laughs> Show us. No. <laughs> <laughs> To the dearest darling oh, TV. No. <laughs> 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 there you go. Oh. <laughs> very nice. I'll take Just that. For Thank you. you very much. <laughs> oh, the finger. <laughs> You're all shareholders, equal shareholders? Yes. Yeah. All right, I'll give you 300,000 for 25%. Yeah. I want to be an equal shareholder. I'll make you an offer. Uh, Three hundred thousand dollars for twenty percent. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make you an offer, which is three hundred thousand dollars for fifteen percent. I've got four million gifters, and I just know that there's many gifting occasions that we don't serve them on, and I really think that we could therefore be very complimentary. Thank you. I am happy to throw an offer out there. So we've got a network of pet stores to what, 300, a network of vet hospitals to 200. Well, what's that got to do with their business? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do for Fast them? They can do a doggy box. Let tools. him speak. Let him have his say. Come on. So what I've done is make sure we have great tools to manage growth, and that's what I'll apply here. And by the way, since the noisy one beside me is annoying me, I will match her offer. Ooh. So 300k for 15%, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, but if you're going out of control, you're going to blow it up. Yeah. And then there was Steve. I want to make money out of you, to be quite blunt. Um, I'll make you an offer at uh, 300k for 10%. Uh, I'm going to treat it like a strict financial investment. If you make a lot of money, I'll make a lot of money. There you go, but as mercenary as you get. So let's just summarise where we're at. Steve has offered you what you asked for, 300,000 for 10%. Janine has offered you 20%. I've offered you 25%. And Glenn and Naomi have offered you 15%. So you've got five offers, well done. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> the sharks are really circling. Can we have you all? <laughs> no. No. Definitely not. We don't play well together. We'd tear each other apart. Do you need to have a chat? Yeah, yes, Do you mind if we have a... Don't Thank take you. too long. <laughs> no, don't take too long. Choppy waters. <laughs> I believe them. I think they'll I think they'll go over three million next year. How about Glenn, Andrew or Janine? Or is it just between Naomi and Steve? I feel like it's between Naomi and Steve and I'm leaning more towards Naomi. You cannot deny their sales and their profit. I mean, seriously. Bloody good, right? Crank the handle, turn the money out. Spit, spit dollars out. But I'm leaning towards Steve. I don't know why. Yeah. I'm feeling yeah. Steve. Because he just wants to make money. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Naomi. Like she owns Red Balloon. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for your offers. We actually were not expecting you all, so it was a really tough decision. So what are you going to do?
Kayser, Samantha and Rose are looking for an investor in their quirky online gifting business. They've scored an ultra-rare shark clean sweep. All five sharks want in, but which one will deliver? Let's just summarise where we're at. Steve has offered you what you asked for, 300000 for 10%. Janine has offered you 20%. I've offered you 25%. And Glenn and Naomi have offered you 15%. So what are you going to do? Samantha, you're the decision maker <laughs> well, here. I this is, this is when it's not her decision. We wanted to ask Naomi. Yeah. Would you accept 12%? What about my offer? <laughs> You're way out of the money. Andrew. I think that means I've Would got to you? know. <laughs> You're way out of the money. We really want you to be our sister. <laughs> <laughs> We're the best investment you'll make. <laughs> okay. I mean, welcome to the family. Oh my gosh, I've got two arms necklace. Such an obvious play. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. 12%. Congratulations. It's not an amazing hit. Right, you'll be on the stage. Good job. Yeah, you've done a great job today. Well done. Thanks a lot, guys. Well done. Well done. All the best. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be three times cash. Maybe, maybe two times cash. Yeah. So that was, that was a, a bloody good deal. I'm gutted. <laughs> Five sharks fighting over us is actually a great feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so confident now. <laughs> if you could syndicate people and then say, I want to buy 10% of all the money you make in the next 30 years, I would have bought shares in those three. Finally, have another sister. <laughs> I've, got another, I've got a big sister. <laughs> next into the tank is Crack, who's come up with a revolutionary fast food concept. I can do this business myself, but with a shark's help, we can take on the world. I hope you're hungry, sharks. Every day I turn on social media and I see that they've got some crazy new food trend coming out of London or Japan or LA. I want this to be the crazy new food trend that's coming out of Melbourne. Hello, sharks. My name is Craig Carrick. I'm here today to talk to you about my very new business, Donuts. I'm here seeking $100,000 for 20% of my company and product. A donut is a combination of a donut and a chicken nugget. Oh. Ah. <laughs> is it? Chicken nugget donut. Yes! Sir! Nothing sweet about it. <laughs> An all, all savoury product. It's 98% chicken. That chicken's got our unique and top secret spice mix that goes through it. Oh. It's got then a cornflake and panko crumb and three different sauces. A cheesy Dijon bechamel, a golden Japanese curry and mozzarella, a hot chili, or you can have it just on its own. You've got 11 you secret herbs and spices? Way more than 11. Oh, how good is this? <laughs> I'm not changing the world with this product. I'm giving something that's fun, it's easy to understand. People get it straight away, and I'm trying to do it as ethically as I can as well. All our chicken is free range and chemical and hormone free. I would invite you to try a donug, love a donug, and welcome any questions. So thank you, Craig. So thank that's $100,000 for 20%, so you're valuing your business at $500,000. That's correct. Great. Let's try the product. Just stand back. Steve's going to knock you <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> you want to go first, Steve? Oh, yeah. I'm, then, then now, this is it. In four years, this is the first time I've actually been served my food first. Is this the happiest I've ever seen you? <laughs> it's fantastic. Who's doing the cooking? This is my lovely wife, Rachel. Oh, really? Rachel, hi. Good job. Thank you very much. Why, why is she doing the cooking? She's best at it. I've been a chef for 15 years, and he came up with a concept. I made it work to his taste. I also think it tastes different. Like, I wouldn't eat a chicken nugget, and I'd definitely eat that. And it is free range, so you're kind of midships of something naughty, but still being good for the planet. This is that? something different. It's made, it's made with care. It's, made, it's a chef's recipe. So you're the next Colonel Sanders. You even got the beard all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you charge? $9 per donut. Nine bucks for one of these? Wow. I intend to move the price point up to $12 for a donut oh. with all the sauce. Seriously? Huge. I like you. You're mercenary. You're fantastic. 
what, why, why donut? So I called it a donut, I just kind of tongue in cheek, and I went on the social media sites and searched the hashtag for it, and there was nothing there. It's fun. People go, what is it? It's a donut and a nugget. It's a fun looking word, it's an unusual sounding word. Cost of goods on $9. So when we're making them ourselves, it's $2.20. Wow. At manufacturing stage, it'll be $4 per unit. Nice. No. So sales, give me an event that you were at and what did you sell in a day? I've only done two events so far. Two events? I sold 1,000 donuts at $9 a go. Oh, wow. It cost me six grand to set it up and get it running. Bloody good sales. So I've, uh, I've turned over 21. Well done. I've spent an extra four and I'm sitting with eight in the tent at the moment after two events. Have you got a number of events lined up? I've just locked in an event with one of Australia's largest shopping centres to be the, the feature food item. Massive food traffic, ma massive PR behind it, and I'll hopefully sell a thousand a day. That works out at some good numbers for me. <laughs> so why do you need an investor? Because I want to take it to the next level. I want to go to the manufacturing stage. I've been working with a manufacturer so far, trying to get a prototype together. They're doing about 30 tonnes of manufacturing a day, um, so they're, they're pretty well versed at this. What are you going to do with 100,000 bucks? 100,000 basically kickstarts the process. 50 grand gets me my first 10,000 donuts made. That's 40 grand for the manufacturer, 10 grand for the cold storage, logistics, boxes, warehousing. Um, 40 grand for a proper event setup, something that looks great and is enticing that I can roll out wherever I want. And the 10 grand is from insurances and, and branding and stuff in it and amongst that. It's a very uncomplicated product, right? You mince up some chicken, throw some spice in, shape it. Throwing some spice in is a, is a bit of an understatement, you know? It's a, that's a bit of an insult to the chef, you know? It's insulting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Craig and Rachel have cooked up a new fast food option, a donut chicken nugget hybrid. Steve loves the taste, but isn't sure that the business has legs. It's a very uncomplicated product, right? You mince up some chicken and you, sh you shape it, throw some spice in, shape it. Throwing some spice in is a, is a bit of an understatement, you know? It's a... That's a bit of an insult to the chef, you know? It's insulting. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is unique as a jelly baby, you know? It's a piece of jelly shaped like a baby <laughs> that we eat. You know, people are looking for a, a full meal, and I think it is a whole meal, like it's quite substantial. In Melbourne, where I live, you can get out for less than 14 bucks for a burger nowadays in most places. I can see this really working overseas and in the States and in London, Japan, Asia. I can see that being something. I'm sitting here asking myself, is it franchise? Is it partly frozen cooked at home? The execution risk is huge. There's a million moving parts to get this from being a nice brand to something that's a really big business. And I ask myself, am I the guy to work with you and get you there? And the answer is no. So I wish you well, but I'm out. Where I've moved to in my investing in, in food and food tech is really in the, the wellness space. If you'd come on with a, a vegan, paleo, organic, nut-free, sugar-free, savoury snack, I'd probably go with you. Best of luck, Craig, Rachel. I have no doubt you're going to have a lot of fun with this, but I'm out. Thank you for your time. Cheers. I've tried it. You know, I, I want this to work, believe me. I, I'm, I'm tired of all the health food rubbish that comes on this show, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to invest. I'm keen to see you somewhere in the future. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best and, and thanks for coming in. But well, I, thanks I for your support. Thanks for your excitement at the start. <laughs> um, the events show that your sales are good. That shows the consumer wants it. So there's, there's a lot to like. I think you're onto something. you haven't proven your tenacity. And being in the food industry, it's a grind, and it's that determination that you need to take to get it to the next level. 
please come back next year, please, because I actually think you're onto something. But I'm out. Cheers. And then there was one. She's wearing my colours. Craig, I don't think you need to come back next year because I'm about to make you an offer. Ooh, here we go. So, um... But well, you're not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> the offer I'm going to put to you is $100,000 for a quarter of your business. Oh, please. What are you going to do? Um... It's about getting doughnuts sold here at every sporting ground, every servo, every fish and chip shop. So I'd like to take the offer. Hey. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. I promise you, we have surprised everybody here. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be forward to it. Thank you. Right out, <laughs> All the best. Well done. The doughnut is going to join the hamburger in perpetuity. I surprised all of you. Yeah. <laughs> well you did. Well done. None of you saw that coming. Not what I expected. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, the, the mighty donut show right. I just know how hard it is to get innovation in that quick service space. For me, I just went, they just need longer. But hey, I might do a deal with you later. I just wanted to surprise you all. <laughs> Crazy. Next to face the sharks tonight is Tanya, who wants to bring a burst of colour to the tank. Hi Sharks, my name's Tanya. I'm the founder and owner of Sunburst Outdoor Living. Today I'm asking for 40,000 for 20% of my company. Sunburst started from a passion of home decor. I saw a need to brighten outdoor living spaces, so I started designing, pushing covers and selling them at local markets. Within three months, I was like overwhelmed with people flying up from Melbourne to buy my cushions. I quickly saw a demand so went online and turned over 792,000 in our first year. Wow. Oh, okay. Well done. Good Thank job. Thank you. In the four years we've been going, we've sold over 135,000 cushions, turned over $2.6 million. We now sell in eight countries via Amazon, and each country showing demand for our products. All of this has been achieved by an ex-acupuncturist that had very limited business experience. Which is you. Which is me. <laughs> <laughs> With your investment, your guidance, and most of all, your contacts, I would love to make Sunburst a global brand. So who would like to join the Sunburst team? Oh, wow. Well done. Tanya, why don't you show us the product? Can we have a look at it? I love my product. Oh. Good on you. Sure you do. Does everybody want a cushion? Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> That's Strelitzer, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I'll have a Strelitzer. I actually hate cushions. You can have a flower. Thank you very much. Thanks. You want that one? I want, want that, that one. one. You can have the big one. Oh, the big one. Oh, it's so beautiful. Steve can have the big one. I don't actually don't like cushions, actually, funny enough. People, they overuse cushions. You go back no. to the hotel room and it's just full of cushions and pillows. Nobody overuses cushions. Confetti. I agree. It's Steve, like get over it, mate. I can tell you, our house, cushions are everywhere. Well done, Tanya. So that's $40,000 for 20%, so you're valuing the business at $200,000. That's a fairly modest valuation for someone who's... To me, the investment today is insignificant compared to your guidance. Well, that's refreshing. We don't always hear that. Yeah. yeah. Tanya, where, where are you from? Uh, Bribey Island. Bribey oh, Island, okay. Great part of Queensland. Tell us what's special about these cushions. I design them. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah. They're mine. <laughs> Look, I know that there's cushions out there, but the figures speak for themselves. Now you've opened that little can of worms. 800,000 bucks in your first year, four years in business, 2.6 mil. Some simple math says that you've had some issues. So what's year two then? Over a million. Yeah, OK. Year three? Uh, 502 turnover. Yeah, year four? Currently at about 344. OK, so your first couple of years, you did your best revenues. 
Yeah, I did. And there's reason. I burnt out. I did everything from building the website, marketing, I was handwriting envelopes, did the whole lot. So I was working ridiculous hours. I had a two-year-old as well. Business can knock us around. Look, you've got two women here in this on this panel, both who started their businesses when, with little kids at home. Yeah. Look, it's difficult, but you kind of just soldier on in some mm. respects and kind of suck it up and, you know, as women yeah. do. Help me understand the challenges that you had. For me, it was just exhaustion. And it's all self-taught. I felt like I was doing three degrees at once. This is how you install a pixel. This is how you run a Facebook ad remarketing. Welcome to small business. I mean, that's what we do, don't we? How are you now working so that we know that it's different than it was? My business is established. I've, I believe I'm solid. My challenge at the moment is exposing it to more people. I'm still just on Facebook. Marketing's not my strength. I recruited a marketing agency and I found that my website was on a Russian porn site. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> You've asked for an investment of, um, well, $40,000. Well, what is your vision and how are you going to return the investment to your partner? I'd love to contact all of the resorts mm -hmm. and big retail outlets. I can custom create designs for specific stores. Are you the person for that journey? Yeah, I think so. What, what, what do you think, we're going to do that? No, no, no. No. Well, why don't you do it then? I know, it sounds easy. It sound, I know what you're saying. You know what I'd, I'd do? It. I'd, I'd look up their address and I'd give them a call and say, G'day, I'm Steve from Queensland. That's the reality, right? And you'd be prepared to do that in business, otherwise you're in trouble. Don't lament that. That's just your job. You're not feeling your confidence at all here, right? I'm sorry, I'm nervous. No, oh, you're, you're fine. You're sort of saying, I've tried and can't. Yeah. You've got to not take no for an answer and you've got to get in there. It's unfortunate, but females tend to do that way. Why do you think there's a female pay gap? Because there is. I'm not denying there isn't, right? But the reality is if you don't come across a certain enough... a bunch of sexist pigs like you. You have three daughters, change the world. I'm not saying it's fair, and I'm saying it's actually the fact, right? you need to show more aggression, and especially for a female. That's a really sexist comment. Tanya is asking for $40,000 for a 20% stake in her outdoor cushion business. But Steve thinks she's too soft. You need to show more aggression, and especially for a female. That's a really sexist comment. You're gonna be in trouble. You're wrong, Steve. I am not timid. I'm just very well, scared. Well, cool. get in there. At the moment. Cool. Everything you've said today basically says you're being timid. I'm not. It's just that this has been my life, my breath, my passion, my dreams for four years, and I'm here now. I will be on the phone 10 hours a day if that's what it takes because I'm going to make this happen with or without you guys. Good. But the fact is, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I've already done it when I haven't. And the reason I haven't is because at the end of the day, I've worked my butt off for three years and I have a child. So I'm trying to juggle everything. I know this is going to work. My figures are there. Sorry. No, no, and you've done well. So I, I, I am I'm... confident. I'm just nervous and overwhelmed and... I just want to see these everywhere. You're out looking for an investor. You need to walk in the door and say, this is what I'm going to do. 40,000 bucks, this, this is what's happened in the past. I've learned all these lessons. Tanya, I want to let you know where I'm at. Um, awesome that you're from Queensland. Um, love your part, Bribe Island, but look, I don't like cushions, as I've already told you anyway. I'm out, thank you very much. OK, thank you. You really probably don't need to take any money from any of us. It's now time to hit the go button, but it's not with me, I'm out. Thank you. Tanya, you've had a bit of a grilling, but hopefully some good advice. It's not a business, frankly, that excites me. I'm not the right partner for you. I wish you well, but I'm out.
Thank you. Thank you. To Steve's point, not about the freaking women's pay gap, which is another discussion, the words that you say, you say try, if only. So I think that if you start shifting and going, I will. I will, yeah. Yeah, instead of try, I think that's where, and it's a type, that's what worries me. Yeah. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. One shark left. So, Tanya, what does success look like for your investor today? Sell me the dream. If I've had $10,000 days in Australia, I see uncapped potential. I want to take this to the world. For that reason, I'm making you an offer. Oh, thank you. No. There you go. I don't think you've come here for money. I think you've come here for marketing and marketing support. But I need to negotiate because otherwise it wouldn't be the Shark Tank. So I'm going to offer you $40,000 for a 30% stake in your business. Because I think we've got a lot of work to do. What are you going to do? I just want it. I just want it. <laughs> Thank you. You've done a great job. Thank you. I just cool. I knew I was going to cry. Can I hug you? <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. I'll Thank see you, you shortly. <laughs> well, she's a character. Oh, shaking, shaking, shaking champagne. Yay, I've got a deal. <laughs> Next into the tank are Jai and Ben with an eco friendly way to start the day working on this day in, day out for the last 18 months, so it means a lot to be here. We're going to be everywhere. Worldwide domination. Worldwide, baby. <laughs> <laughs> They're in disguise. Hey, Sharks. My name's Ben Goodman. And I'm Jai Falinski. And together, we're Pod and, and Parcel from, from Melbourne. Melbourne. And we're seeking $100,000 for 15% of our company. Hands up, who here thinks paying $4 for a small cup of coffee is actually reasonable? Depends how good the coffee is. That, by the way, is the average cost of a cup of coffee in Melbourne. Now, what if I was to offer you the exact same cup of coffee for less than a dollar? What if you simply just press the button, waited 15, 20 seconds max, and you could have your coffee from the comfort of your own home and still be in your favourite jammy jams. <laughs> that, Sharks, is how oh, we like our coffee. What exactly do we do? Well, we take the stigma out of coffee pods completely, from their bad taste to the huge environmental impact caused every single day. We do this by using real, specialty-grade, cafe-quality coffee, and we put it into Nespresso-compatible coffee pods. Pods themselves are 100% biodegradable and compostable too, so there's even less waste. If you want the best tasting coffee pod in the most ethical and sustainable way, you choose us. We are the coffee pod for the coffee snob, and we believe we're Australia's best coffee pod. Wow. Excellent. So Ben and Jay, you're looking for $100,000 for 15%, valuing your business at around six sixty-seven thousand. dollars Yep. Good. Why don't we try it? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. No worries. Cool. like the service around here. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. It's a very nice crema on the top. Now, clearly, guys, this has been invented before. <laughs> and they're doing a good job. There's a lot of people doing a good job in the coffee pod space. Mm -hmm. So you're coming into a very crowded market. Tell me what's different. It's so mainly the fact that we use specialty coffee. So we're using the same coffee that you'd get in a cafe anywhere around Melbourne or a good cafe around Sydney. Uh, most other people aren't doing that. What are they putting in all the other coffee that's out there? It's mainly Robusta coffee, so it's a lower grade coffee. They're definitely not using specialty coffee. 
So that's the main difference between us and them. But you're doing the blending and the roasting? So we don't do any of the blending or roasting ourselves. We no. give it to a contract manufacturer yeah. who's our roaster. W what is it you do? You don't do the blending or the roasting, or in the, someone else packs it? We, we basically broker it, so we go to the roaster. Um, they make up the kind of flavour profiles. We send that coffee to our pod manufacturer. They put it into the pods, they send it back to us, and then we sell it to the public. So you don't roast it, you don't package it, you just sort of say, I'll have some Brazil, some Rwanda, and some Ethiopia, please, and please put it in a packet. That's yeah. it. So I'll go on your website, I say, yeah, I'll have some of them, or 12 months' worth of them, and then you mail them to me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So how long have you been in business? 18 months. 18 months. Right. Yeah. And what are sales today? So we've, in those 18 months, 12 of those months, we did $110,000. And in the last six months, we've turned over $500,000. Oh, whoa, OK, whoa. Wow. What happened? What changed there? Um, a lot of marketing, really. Join Ben, I'm liking you all of a sudden. He went from 110k in 12 months yeah. yep. to a half a brick in six months. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. uh, how much did you spend on that marketing in order to get that? It's a 10 to 1 marketing spend. $7,000 a month we would spend in, in marketing. 10%, eh? Yeah. Uh, have you paid yourselves? Yes. Right, so 10% net profit's pretty damn good. Yeah. So, Ben, or Jai, I don't mind who answers this, where are we going to be in three years? What's going to be the top line? What's going to be the bottom line? So that'll be three to $400,000 a month in sales at a 30% um, profit margin. So five million rev. Yeah. And at one and a half million dollars in net profit. Yeah. You'd have a spectacular business if you had that. I, I don't believe it. Well, I mean, I didn't quibble with the valuation. I think if you got it off the ground, you could get to five million pretty quickly. The, the challenge is how quickly you get there. The fundamentals of business and the fundamentals of marketing is don't be better, be different. Mm -hmm. Right? You haven't proved you're different. You're just saying we're better coffee. Personally, I feel the way that we're different is the way that we approach our customer and speak to them. Uh, if you look at all of our copy, especially in our emails and everything, it's fun and approachable. That's why I'm getting stuck. Your point of difference is humour. So then I read it and go, we are an award-winning supplier of... Oh, OK, hang on, you're still... It's, it's not fun. It's yeah, not yeah. cheeky. It's not that. You haven't proven your point of difference to me. I'm out. Ooh. Ooh. If, if I invest in your business, do I have to wear those pyjamas? Can Optional. if you want to, Optional. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm tempted because I love the, the coffee business. But, I mean, you haven't really got that brand engagement right. The customer is your hero. You haven't made them a hero. It's a bit too much about the coffee and not about them. I'm out. Fair enough. It was weird. You came in here as a pair of Melbourne hipsters with beards and pyjamas and magically disappearing aprons, right? <laughs> and that's cool, but that's not that. I don't know what you're bringing, other than just repackaging some more coffee pots. We've got a whole plan for redoing the website, redoing all of our uh, Business copy. will be great tomorrow. You should come back then. That's why we need your investment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, I want to do something. I'm going to wait to see what Naomi does. <laughs> Who's in? Who's out? I love my coffee. So I'm going to throw you an offer. Pretty, pretty simple. It is such a young business, you're going to need so much work and mentoring. We're going to have to make sure we do this right. The offer is 100k for 30%. How does that feel? Ouch! Double the yeah. ending loss? It's, it's OK. So, Glenn, you're in for 100,000 for 30%. Correct. I see you as a pure play. Marketplace online. I'm thinking that I need to match Glenn's offer. So Glenn and Naomi both in at 30%, 100,000. You look worried, Steve. Look, he can build you an app. <laughs> and he's not a natural <laughs> retailer. An and Glenn can put you in his stores beside his pig's ears as well. That's fantastic. <laughs> Coffee for pets. That's I it. like it. <laughs> I love the fact you walked through the door there and you had a real, had a real bit of spark. Right, I thought it was fantastic. But nothing's transferred up there. I was going to hang in the game just to make sure they didn't try and uh, rip you off. 
Steve, so, the um, guardian of all entrepreneurs. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should try and bargain them down that a little bit further. You've got two in there, so... So he's wasting your time, he's prattling on. Look, all the best and, and all... Uh, I'm out, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Let's get down to business, guys. OK, just to summarise, you've got two offers. Glenn at 30% and Naomi at 30%. The rest of us are out. What are you going to do? Are you guys willing to work together? With Naomi? Is there any chance you could... Have you ever worked with Naomi? Yeah. <laughs> Jai and Ben have a business selling specialty coffee pods online. Both Glenn and Naomi have offered $100,000 for 30% of their company. What are you going to do? Now the hipster baristas must make a choice. Are you guys willing to work together? Have you ever worked with Naomi? I'm fabulous. What are you talking about? No, not on this one. If you really want to scale, you actually can have a global business. I'll deliver you an audience. What you need is not someone who's going to take over your journey, but simply support it. We're going to make sure we get results. Do you want someone who's a professional investor and a professional mentor? Are you saying I'm or not Or someone who spends a lot of time doing a lot of talking? <laughs> <laughs> He can talk. We've got gold yeah. and silver medals up there for the Olympic talky talky fest. What do you think? Are you feeling the vibe? Are you feeling the vibe? <laughs> yeah, the vibe. I'm feeling it's the vibe. Do you guys need to go and talk about this? Yeah. Okay, go. Nice. Good comments. Thank you. <laughs> I think someone's in for a roasting here. Oh. Um, what are you feeling? I think we should definitely go with the counter offer for sure. Yeah, but it's wood shark. I'm thinking more than Naomi, but I don't know. He's, she's online yeah, and then he's retail. Yeah, yeah but yeah, he can go the distribution route. Mm. There's no difference. I know there's no brand voice right there's now. There's no brand. He said we're clever, and then you read that and you're like, well, what's well, boring? You could tweak the brand though. B1 and B2. <laughs> so, gentlemen, you've got two offers. What are you, what are you thinking? We're leaning towards Naomi. Why would you do that? Because I'm fabulous. <laughs> because of the red balloon and the... Do you know how many yeah. people buy off us online today? Dwarfs whatever red balloon has ever done. So just don't discount the vet. In terms of future distribution, who do you think can bring more? For distribution? So how are your grocery stores going? We've got some pretty good relationships <laughs> with some pretty good ones. There you go. If you've got two choices and you can't differentiate between them, why don't you make a counter offer? We were thinking 25%. Keep thinking. We were aiming towards Naomi for 25%. It might only be 5% to you, but I'd rather a much bigger piece of the action because you'll get much more of my focus. So I'm going to stick at 30%. Yeah. yeah. Let's just go for it. I think we're going to have a lot more fun with you, Naomi. Yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. 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 Fun. Business is supposed to be fun, isn't it? Good job. That's all right. Cheers. Nice to meet you. It's good to meet you. It's OK. Thank you. All the best. Cheers. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers. I hope you roast the competition. If they do their numbers, that's just a goodbye. Yeah. Sorry. I'm the fun shark, you're the not fun shark. Yeah, I, I think that's unfair. I mean, hanging around with animals is fun, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, us. I love my dog. <laughs>